starting stream. Okay, so I do, I start it, and then I'm live. Okay. And perfect. We're here, we're here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived. And then I'm live. Okay. Oh, that is loud. Okay, I'm going to turn and the game down. Perfect. We're here, we're here. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived. Oh, I am sorry for the echo. Uh, <laughs> I was listening to the stream to see uh, to see what exactly I should set the gain knob to. New mic, new day, new life. Uh, <laughs> what's up? How's everybody doing? Critical roll time. I have been so excited to come back and watch episode two. Uh, it honestly took me longer than I wanted to, to get this all set up, because if you did watch last stream, you can tell background's different. Uh, I didn't move houses, just rooms. <laughs> and so now, uh, but my computer's back, it's all set up. So we should be good to go watching this. I've got my, my dinner in a cup, uh, <laughs> call it my potion. And, uh, everyone get... Get nice and comfy. Pull up a chair. Get some snacks. Alcoholic beverage if you're if you're of age. And we're gonna we're gonna jump into it. Okay. And I will turn on the other music. <laughs> For introducing the topic. Critical role episode two. Boom. I also got this fancy new overlay. Let me know what you think of it. I, I liked it. It took me a while to find one that I really liked, but I thought that this one looked good. Um, also, uh, for a quick kind of uh, recap for anyone who did not watch episode one with us, we are watching through the entirety of season one, campaign one, Vox Machina. Uh, I've been waiting to watch the animated series until I finished the watch through and I'm watching through with all of you guys in episode one we were introduced to our intrepid heroes uh there are seven of them uh well eight actually there were only seven in the first episode because one of them wasn't there uh they just got to a dwarven city called Craghammer uh in order to I think it was partially to rescue someone also partially to set up some mining contracts little bit of this, a little bit of that, but for very legitimate reasons uh, is why they're there. And they kind of, you know, derped around uh, Craghammer, just kind of chilled out for a little bit until they managed to get uh, this nice cask of luxury ale, uh, which they then traded to one of the big bosses of Craghammer uh, for kind of favorable disposition uh, because they aren't welcome in all areas of the city. So now uh, they have found out where the uh, person that they're there to rescue is. They're in these series of mines. And right before the session ended, an abomination, a very scary looking naga uh, that was like all stitched together, very Frankenstein-esque, uh, escaped from the mine. A bunch of miners were running out screaming. Uh, and they took down the abomination naga and now they are about to delve into their minds. We have our first dungeon of the series. Uh, so two things that I'm going to do. Number one, give my uh, kind of one minute impression of the first session from a DM standpoint. Uh, as well as predict what I think is going to happen in this episode. So, uh, first episode... My main takeaway is, oh my god, there's seven players. Ah! It's, it's too many. It's too many. Uh, most of my problems with, like, mo most of all of my problems were literally just because it's like, oh wait, there's seven of them. Any of my problems with the players, any of my problems with Matt's DMing, all stemmed from the fact that there's freaking seven of them. Now, I will say, in all fairness, I didn't have many problems. It was really fun. It was honestly, like, 
I, admittedly better than I was expecting. Um, it, there was uh, there was a lot of things that I was expecting in terms of like the Matt Mercer effect, uh, m a lot of Marisha May hate, uh, and like Matt being like this overly descriptive like book narrator of a DM. He was fine. Like it, it was like most of the uh, problematic nature was that he was having to describe like four separate locations simultaneously because they the party split into three groups. Uh, and also Marisha was fine. Like I I the Marisha hate is crazy. I'm sure that you know there will be a lot of other. Uh, I have a lot more sessions to go. That was just the primer. Uh, but she seemed great. Uh, Druid is is a confusing class. I have DM'd first timers that were significantly worse than her. Um, so yeah, all in all, uh, all of the all of the issues were just oh my god, there's seven of them. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that gets uh, a little bit better, or it might just not, and I might get used to it. We'll see. So that's my that's my summary of episode one. My prediction for episode two, it's pretty clear we're going into a dungeon dive uh, of some manner, which will be very interesting to see how Matt DMs. Uh, what up, Undead King? Uh, with first time druids, you best not be talking about me. No, Paige, not talking about you. Just first time casters in general. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, but we're, we're about to go into our first, uh, dungeon dive, which is going to be sick. I'm very excited. Uh, I think that the way that DMs handle dungeons is a very stylistic thing. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to go about doing it, and it'll be very interesting to see how Matt handles it. Uh, my, my big prediction for this episode is that we will get to the end of the dungeon. Uh, we will see the dungeon boss, and I think that the dungeon boss will be the halfling that the party is here to rescue or to bring home. Uh, one kind of interesting thing about the Naga that they fought right outside the mine is that they narrated that it was uh, strangely fast for its size. Uh, that was, I think, you know, potentially just played to be like, whoa, so scary, what's going on? This ain't your mother's Naga. Uh, but I think it also potentially, uh, could have been a bit of foreshadowing. I, I think that, uh, our halfling is going to have been kind of made into an abomination and it's going to be a very fast, almost monk like, uh, uh, dungeon boss where it's going to be like running around. Maybe it even gets like some sort of benefit, uh, from hitting like multiple people within the same turn. Uh, I could I could really see that being an interesting boss, and honestly, now that I say it, kind of an interesting uh, kind of an interesting premise for a monk subclass. That would I mean, monks are you know meant to be able to run around, hit a lot of people. Uh, I think I think Way of the Drunken Master might have a feature that pro uh, that promotes that, but in general, uh, I think that could be kind of interesting of like a monk subclass where. You do like extra damage the first time you hit someone, like per person per turn. So it's like if you're hitting like three separate people, you're doing like I don't know, say your proficiency bonus in extra damage on each hit. That could be kind of fun. Um, but that's that's kind of the vibe I'm getting off of this. I think that that's one of the things that I'm anticipating here. Uh, but with that being said. We will jump into episode two. Uh, I will be pausing and unpausing, giving my thoughts, responding to chats. Uh, so it will. It, the episode is three hours. I will bet that this takes us maybe five to get through because I, I do pause relatively frequently to uh, to chat. Uh, but it wouldn't be transformative if I didn't. I don't want to just restream their, you know, their content. So let's do it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Critical Role. Also, let me know if the volume is okay. Voice actor nerdy types sit here and play Dungeons and Dragons. So we're continuing from last week's adventure. So uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and show you some of the character backstory. Right, listen up. If you have ale, then you have a friend in Grog Strongjaw, a Goliath of towering height and size. This barbarian has an appetite for the two great loves in his life. Combat 
women, and ale. <laughs> Wait. Easily the brains of the group. Grog is often consulted for his vast knowledge of shapes, colors, and <laughs> shiny things. <laughs> also ale. In his early years, armed with his two hands. For the first couple, uh, you know, we'll re we'll redo the intros, give everyone a, a little bit of a reminder. I will say I had, you know, a strong commentary about the intros during my first episode. So if you want to know what I said, you can go back and uh, and look there. Uh, the only thing I will add to my analysis is that <laughs> Travis is an absolute treasure. I... <laughs> I love Travis and and Grog. I'm I'm super excited uh, just to see him. I I talked with some uh, with some commenters uh, on on last episode, and uh, we just talked about how much we we love Travis. And I'm only one episode in, so if they loved him after watching the whole thing, I cannot wait. <laughs> and a great axe. Grog often enjoyed proving his might amongst the ranks of his family's wandering herd. But after coming upon an unsuspecting elderly gnome in the woods, he objected to the killing of such an innocent life. A creature of impulse, Grog felt only pity for this, <laughs> this terrified little thing. His disobedience cost him dearly, beaten bloody, and banished by the herd leader, his own tis, Kevdak. Tis, tis. Kevdak! abandoned and left to die. Exiled from his herd, it was then that the relative of the very gnome he fought to save, saved him. <gasps> it was the kindness of a known cleric named Pike. That okay, I've changed my mind. I'm fast forwarding through the intros. If you haven't seen them, feel free to watch them for yourself or my, uh, or my first episode. Because I just realized that that is the first 11 minutes. Uh, so I'm probably going to start fast forwarding through these in future and protect her fiercely also he is adorable and gives expert massages welcome back everyone trinket so, does seem adorable more affiliated with the characters <laughs> uh let's get this party started so as a heads up uh, i want to let you know once again we're waiting for the charity elements of this stream to open up again since the big charity that happened a couple weeks ago but once we do uh we're gonna be taking uh donations half to go to help run the channel the other two Donate to 826. Marisha will uh, explain that here in just a second. As a heads up, Ashley, who plays our bar, our, our cleric, Pike, uh, unfortunately couldn't make it again this week. Because oh, no. She's busy filming amazing stuff with her career being amazing. But she says that she's sad. She can't be here. She loves you guys. And as soon as Pike can re enter the campaign, hopefully in a couple weeks, uh, all awesome gnomeness shall double. Uh, look, man. Look. <sighs> I, under, I know that this was a home game. Uh, they have, the volume is a bit low. Can you turn it up? I can. This is good. This is good. Please, please let me know uh, if the volume is low. Cause it is, it's hard to tell what you guys hear on, uh, on my end. Uh, so also tonight there was a goal to try and hit 1,000 subscribers on the channel. So what we're gonna do is we only have 130 people to subscribe tonight. Is if we can get all 130 before the show ends this evening, but we're gonna do a random selection of those people. Is that any better? Person within those thousand subscribers. Let me know, Undead King, if that's, if that's any better. Hopefully it is, um, let's see. Here, I'll test it again. To win a copy of the player's handbook signed by all of us, as well as a really, really cool image that that's was no tweeted out earlier by King of Sunday, also signed by all of us. Uh, so. Go ahead and pull your friends in and see if we can get some more subscribers before the show's out tonight. So hopefully that'll be fun. Um, so if Marisha, do you want to go ahead and explain a little bit about the charity 826 we'll be plugging in the near future? Yeah. Oh, I think Marisha's just qu actually quiet here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let me know if now my, my mic and, uh, and thank you much better. Sick. All right. Yeah, I, I went through kind of tuning, fine-tuning these things last stream, and then I moved my entire setup, and all the knobs got bumped while I was moving. Uh, so everything's a, a little off. Um, but sweet. Thank you, Ended King. Oh, no. Please tell me. If we can get all 100. Okay. Hopefully that doesn't happen too many more times. If it continues happening, I might have to look into that. Um, I'm going to take off my jacket. It's getting a little hot. But uh yeah so i 
I know that, you know, this was a home game. It was all through Pathfinder beforehand. I know that they are uh, just legitimately friends and compatriots and that, you know, the eight of them uh, is like the party. But, you know, piggybacking off of my feedback from last episode, man, oh, man, are is seven people tough. Uh, and I'm all for, like, you know, having having a decent amount of people, having people be able to drop in and drop out. Uh, but normally when I say, like, a decent amount of people, I mean, like, five. Uh, and you can still run it when there's, like, four, three, even two. But having eight and still running at seven it might be good you know obviously i don't know pike i don't know any of the situation there but uh it might be better if pike just bowed out permanently uh and maybe hopefully cross fingers that someone else bows out as well and we can get it down to six because <laughs> then at least if it's six uh it's it's at least more difficult for the party to split three ways like what happened last time oh yeah yo we're in 30 before the show ends this evening we're going to do a random selection of the people a person within those thousand subscribers to win a copy of the player's handbook signed by all of us as well as a really really cool image that was tweeted out earlier by king of sunday also signed by all of us uh, so go ahead and pull your friends in, see if we can get some more subscribers before the show's out tonight. So hopefully that'll be fun. Um, so if Marisha, if you want to go ahead and explain a little bit about the charity. Oh, I should probably sub to Geek and, and Sundry if I'm going to go through this whole thing. <laughs> that helps kids through the age of six to 18, uh, with their creative and structural writing skills. And they also help teachers and yeah good artsy creative things so donate and definitely Wait, visit can we donate? time travel like, tonight we can't donate ah. here, uh, donate tonight yet it's not uh, available start yet. saving your money but not you yet you can still but you can still go to oh, 11 players undead kid you're a you're a legend dude how do you <laughs> that's insane uh the most i'm trying to think of how many i had the most players I've ever had was after the very first campaign I have I ever ran. It was the it was the finale episode, or not episode, but the finale session, uh, and we had all of the guest players that we'd ever had join, and I think, I think we had six or seven, but that entire session was a fight. So like the previous session had left off on a cliffhanger. So then that session was just like one big fight. And then uh, afterwards, it was like victory lap for the players uh, thematically. Um, so it didn't really, you know, we weren't really pushing story forward anymore. It didn't really matter what they did. Um, 11 players, though. Shoosh. That is, that is crazy. I, I do bet it was fun, but holy heck. <laughs> to the Time Travel Mart in Echo Park, and you can also go to their website, 826LA, and I'm sure you can donate through there if you want to do that. Yes, we'll, donate we'll, be, we'll be getting that going in the near future. Yes. So, anyway, let's go ahead and do a little recap of what happened last week. So, the party uh, has been hired by their friend, uh, Arcanist Allura Vaisorin in the city of Iman, to head towards the dwarven town of Craghammer. Oh. As a good friend of hers and one of the members... Oh, darn it. They're doing a, they're doing a recap. Okay. So I don't need to do a recap. That's actually good to know going forward. Uh, I will just give my kind of recap impression and my prediction because it looks like they do a recap. Members of the Council of Haldori has gone missing. This being a halfling paladin named Lady Kima of Vord. She was dead. on a vision quest as part of a pilgrimage and was drawn towards some dark totally evil dead. she said was manifest. I was also a noob DM, so it was rules light. I overestimated how many players I could handle. We played about 10 sessions. Dude. 10 sessions at 11 players like that is i don't know i think that does speak to like your skill that 11 players stuck around for 10 sessions even if even if seven of them stuck around for 10 sessions uh at, you know as a first time dm you must be pretty good for them to be having enough fun to to hang around um rules light you know totally makes sense uh but I mean, that's that's a lot, and, and congrats on managing that. I run game for seven players, and I use Taldore Campaign Guide. Uh, I don't know. Is the Taldore 
campaign guide been going on for four years? <whistles> Justin, a dude. Okay, maybe, maybe it's just me. I get nervous after three. Like even four players, I'm like, oh my god, this is so much to handle. <laughs> Uh, so I, it, maybe it's just me. Cause I, I take very, um, I, I take very intricate concern with each of my players. And this is totally, I want to head this off right at the past. This is totally personal preference. Um, and I think that there are a lot of good DMing styles that can be done at a lot of different player counts. Um, but I, I try to, uh, to take very, um, strict care of of each of my players but also to be fair i haven't uh i haven't dm'd in a while i've been i've been playing more recently and i've been learning more about dming recently so potentially if i went back i might be able to handle more than i think um it's right <laughs> we have a lot of fun hell yeah man if you have a lot of fun that is that is the only thing that that legitimately matters and that's what I, you know, I gave my feedback at the beginning of like sheesh seven players. They all look like they're having a blast. Um, that, and that's really the only thing that matters at the end of the day. I will say slightly as an entertainment product, I think it makes it a little bit tougher to follow, but if they're having fun, they will weave great stories and that will make it entertaining inherently. Uh, I only run two to six players now. I think that three is my my most recent campaign that I ran was was well I ran two simultaneously one was three and one was four, um, and I actually think three is my is my sweet spot. I can really focus on um, not necessarily the characters' stories, but their intimate mechanics. Like I can look at each character and how all of their mechanics interact with the builds that they've made and make really engaging combats that specifically kind of target and either like provide a very obvious like hey this enemy is like purpose built for this character build or the opposite something that really challenges a character build but maybe allows the other two to like kind of make up for it and shine um so that's I, I think three is about the sweet spot for me on that. But there's a lot of different types of campaigns. And I'm also really looking to uh, run some other uh, some other systems. And I've really been thinking a lot about how many players I want uh, for those other systems, because, you know, having three to four isn't necessarily the default in, in those, at least. Testing somewhere deep beneath Kraken and hadn't been heard from since. So the party was sent there uh, to go ahead and seek her. Upon arriving in Craghammer, shenanigans ensued. Uh, they made some friends, made some enemies, wandered the town. Uh, brother sisters uh, walked around as if they were married. No! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no! Bears almost got into fights and rings. Uh, and eventually the party made their way towards the bottom ring of Craghammer proper, uh, talking to Lord Nostock Grayspine, who uh, is. Grayspine. Yes, Grayspine indeed. <laughs> who is the uh, the head of the uh, Grayspine Mines at the bottom of Craghammer, where supposedly this paladin disappeared to. After having a conversation with him, a bunch of goblins and ogres began to spring from the mines and attacking the workers. The party swooped down to aid, realized that the goblins and ogres weren't attacking, they were fleeing mm. from something else, of which emerging from within the mines proper, some strange Naga-based Hydra-ish abomination. The party then proceeded to slaughter it, Final blow dealt by Scanlan. Hi, yeah, Scanlan. Hi. Hi. Love how either they speed run through a dungeon or get face palmed by a pack of gnolls and goblins. Look, dude, I'm. Uh, these words that you're saying to me are not shocking. Uh, I am. I am not surprised to hear that. I mean, e even in the last one, they sort of. Uh, they didn't even roll initiative until the actual boss monster got out i think or no actually they they did roll initiative before that uh but it, it's i don't think they they rolled initiative before the the mine fight even though they did a couple of combats before and i think that that's fair enough unless the combat is supposed to be a challenge it's supposed to be a puzzle with seven players, do not worry about initiative. You just get through that ish and uh, and let people do do the fun stuff that they want to do. Um, 
it, it'll be very interesting. I mean, you know, it's kind of the issue here is that seven players is just so hard to balance an encounter for. The DMG's only going to give you advice for balancing it with four. And I, I don't even... I think that they might tell you, like, some modifications that you can make for, you know, plus one or minus one on the party count. But when you're getting up to seven... I mean, the CR values are already fucked. Let's, you know, let's get that out of the way. But you're, they're going to become progressively harder to balance as you add more and more players because target priority becomes so much more of a thing. When you have seven players, if they all hit the same thing, it's gonna die. And if you have enough monsters to combat seven players, if all the monsters hit the same, th hit the same player, that player's gonna die. <laughs> So, you know, we're just getting into kind of ludicrous territory with, with this many players. But also, that's okay. It's okay to be a little bit ludicrous. Um, as long as it's it's fun and you're still telling fun stories. You know, Bard, what you did. And that's where we pick up. So, as all of you are still riding the adrenaline of the battle, Scanlan, feeling the, the tingling in his fingers. More hit full points, full extra damage died, no worries. Uh, Fair enough, of brother. The kind of slowly converge in and begin to kind of walk up to the party. Some of the what you want? That was great! That was well done! Was fantastic! Could you learn that? One of them comes up, ah, I could've done better than that. And they start just shouting off each other and patting each other in the back. A few moments of this progresses before all of a sudden there's a hush comes about the crowd and you see about five or six carvers pull their way through, mm. carvers being the guards of Craghammer, uh, with Lord Nostock Grace by himself stepping through. He looks at us the group and goes, All right, so you've certainly proven yourselves in battle. <laughs> well, no one else was around, yeah. I would like to continue this conversation that we had back in my office, if you don't mind. He turns around and begins to walk back. Uh, Wait a minute, so he's... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Mr. Grayspine fella, when they talked to him before, was like, hey, you guys can go and look in the mines by yourself. Like, you guys can figure it out. And then they tried to ask him more, and he told them to fuck off. They, <laughs> The timeline of this is they walk outside, they fight a couple of things, and then he comes out and is like, whoa, actually, you guys are kind of cool. Come back in here. I was just kidding around. Like, what's what's happening? <laughs> oh, wait. Nostock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still an eagle? Can you even talk to me? just go call? Well, I'm, I'm not an eagle, but I am still poisoned. Oh, oh I can help you. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to go up and I'm going to cast... Um... Cast? Oh, yeah, I can cast yeah, spells. Can cast? I can. I've got plenty of spells. You can kill? Yeah. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I'm going to cast protection from poison on Keyleth. Okay. Protect? Uh, essentially, go ahead. Protection from poison. Is that... Is that a spell? Is that a spell I've just never heard of? There's a lot of things in this where I have to try and sort through, like, what is Pathfinder weirdness that they're just, like, bringing in and I'm just, like, generally unaware of? And what is, like, homebrewed for 5e? And what are 5e rules that, I'm, that I just am unaware of? Because I have a decent knowledge of uh, of all the rules, but there are things that I get surprised with pretty frequently. So that is, I don't recognize protect from poison though. That's, that's an interesting uh, spell. I'd make a saving throw. Uh, I guess more useful the higher level you get, to the be cannon. fair. To be constitution. I made the second one. Mm -hmm. A 10 plus yeah. my constitution. Three. Hey. Thirteen. So thirteen? Yeah. Hey. Thirteen. Alright, so after you finish casting the spell, you feel the poison. Maybe Pathfinder. The rest of your body. A lot of the a lot of the items that they're using are Pathfinder. I know that. Uh which is like they have like and a lot of them are pretty cool. Like they have like the earrings that are essentially like sending stone earrings. But also it sounds like there's a crafting system of some kind that they were using, because they talked about how Tiberius made a lot of their items. But he's a sorcerer? He's not an artificer? I don't even think artificer was out at this point. So uh, there, there's a lot of interesting Pathfinder crossover. 
uh, that is that is really pulling on my lack of knowledge. I've never. I should buy the Pathfinder books at some point. I don't have a ton of interest in running Pathfinder, mostly because I don't think most of my players have a lot of interest in it. But it would be good just to read instead of like all I really know about the differences are like the top five differences between Pathfinder and 5e type videos. Um, and so it'd be it'd be interesting to read through the rule book and actually like, you know, firsthand see what a lot of the differences are. Because I know that they're just generally the same thematically and that Pathfinder is generally grittier um, than than 5e. But that's about where my knowledge stops enchanted their items oh interesting so there's enchanting in pathfinder percy builds some stuff don't want to spoil <laughs> fair enough yeah, yeah yeah don't spoil um but okay i mean look i'm i'm always into crafting uh well before artificer came out and honestly i kind of wish that artificer wasn't just like replicate magic items i wish that there was a little bit more um I wish that they had reduced a lot of the other stuff about Artificer. Uh, like, a lot of the stuff that I don't... I mean, is fine, um, but I don't really think adds too much to the class. And just gone even deeper into the infusions. Like, not just like, oh, here's a list of, like, custom magic items, as well as, like, you can replicate all of these magic items. But given them some sort of system for, like hey as an artificer you can like combine these effects or like you know you have a certain amount of like points per level that you can put into a build and you can spend those points on these things i think that would be super cool uh, especially if you combine that with like a material system that i always wish was i mean i just wish crafting was more of a thing in 5e it's one of my major complaints um but i think that it would be so interesting to build that into the fabric of artificer uh, a lot of the stuff is rough drafted over from their home game. <laughs> yeah, that's what it seems like, which is which is fine. Like I'm I'm totally down with. Um, but but yeah, I'm I'm super down for for homebrew crafting a lot of stuff. I'm always down to let my players uh, craft their own things if they don't want to go out and find them. Yeah, take a breath for yourself. Uh, the rest of the miners kind of look about and. Uh... Especially because there's there's advice in the Dungeon Master's Guide for how Dungeon Masters can build their own homebrew magic items. So why not, like, put those into the Artificer class or into just the base rules, like, outside of the DMG, throw them in the PHP, and build that into, like, a crafting system of, like, okay, like, you know, these are kind of the general power levels for, um, for creating magic items, yada, yada, yada. I mean... I don't know. Don't don't listen to me. But if um, right now I'm pretty mid, pretty whatever on one D and D. If one D and D comes out and they reveal a magic item system, like a crafting system, whoo! Me and me and one D and D will be having a different conversation. Uh, at the moment, I mostly just don't want to give wizards more money. Uh, <laughs> very much a fan of homebrew, fun lawyer before rules lawyer. Hell yeah, bro. That's how I started out content creation was uh, was just like posting a lot of my own homebrew magic items. Uh, and I still have like a big homebrew magic item repository on World Anvil um, that is just like a bunch of fun shit. Like I, I feel like um, this is another thing where I talk about like having uh, three players as opposed to a bunch of players. I feel like I can really build out magic items specifically for each player a little bit easier when there are less of them um that's not to say that you can't make good like specific magic items with a bunch of people with like you know 7-eleven people but it was it was a little bit easier for me when i only had like three um but but yeah i'm 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 super down with this walks off kind of looking back to the yeah, I guess we should we, go we far. Have, we have two very important questions. Can't we questions look in the hole a little bit more? No, oh, we're going to go in the hole in just a minute, Grog. Then you can smash. You did that last night. We need to take care of business. 
Separate. Let's go talk to the men. I'm sure it's going to lead back to the mine. So to the hole. Certainly yes. to the hole. Everything is back. Percy, do you have something to say before? Well, we go? we just we. It's this is good. We have to find out what that was, and we have to see if he'll finally give us some of that ale. I think. Of two <laughs> <laughs> it was wine, I believe. No, it was bloody, bloody. Dude, I'm hoping that Percy and. Uh, and Scanlan do a bit more this session. Percy was very, very quiet, uh, uh, Taliesin. But this goes back to the, you know, seven freaking people uh, in there. You know, everyone can't talk all the time. So I'm hoping that Percy, I get to know Percy's, like, personality a bit more. Blood wine. Beer. Bloody blood, wine. Blood, blood beer. Wine. Blood beer. It was delicious. It was good, I'm <laughs> sure. Really good. Let's go. Let's follow Let's follow okay, him. Let's follow this is what's... Per- all right, so right with you. As you head back to the ramp, it heads up from the uh, the mine enclosure itself. I'd tell some of the, the, rest, uh, the, the realm, list. which is where the, uh, the Great Spine uh, Industries mining facility is. You are brought into the building again, brought back to Nostok's office, in which he's not sitting. He's kind of pacing behind his desk, waiting for you as you approach. As you enter the room, he stops pacing, turns around, puts his hand on the desk. We should enter and close the doors behind you. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to slam the door like that. Flatulent dragon boy, Surprise. So as you close it. Sorry, period. Sir, Sir Gracefine. Lord Gracefine? Mr. Gracefine? Lord Gracefine, yes. Why have you summoned us here? Is it to tell us information about what just came out of your mind, I hope. Well, let's be clear. We dwarves don't need help from outsiders. We can handle our own business. Of course, of course. Fine. Right, right, right. Speaking of outsiders, you wouldn't happen to have seen a Lady Kima, would you? Uh, yes, the discussion was based previously. You were searching for her, and last we saw, she was down in your mind. Yep, we did. They, they, don't, they don't like her. She was a troublemaker, and she yeah. went in. And you're an eagle. <laughs> She's in the mine. We'll go in and find her, right, Lord Gracefine? You're welcome. As far as I know, she's down there somewhere. Hopefully, still in one piece. While we're there, would you like us to take care of any other problems? We'll get into that. You see, these small intrusions have been bad for meeting our quotas with the bronze grip metalworks and export shipments. Right, it's all about the cash. Collapse <laughs> a non-negotiable portion of our tunnels to prevent incursions like this, without my approval. And this is a pattern that I wish to stop at once. Thus, I have a proposition for you. This is a pattern that I now, wish to stop. I will give you free reign to our minds. I shall get the proper approvals to make sure no carvers bother you as the wonder of the city's lower ring. But I would contract you to delve past our tunnels and investigate the source of these creatures. Where they come from, where they live, and if there is some sort of a a leader. Who gives them their commands? Eliminate them. For this, I'll reward you with not a trifle sum. 25,000 gold pieces. Aye, aye, aye. 250 gold per beast scalp you provide upon return. Oh, I like this. Grunt, this seems like a wonderful job, doesn't it? Money it is, is wonderful. We like <laughs> money. but we... Bro, I constantly forget that they are level 9. I mean, even for level nines, this is quite a bit of cash. But you know, it's not it's not that crazy at uh, at mid tier. But uh, holy shit, I keep in my mind. I'm like, it's episode two. They're level threes. <laughs> they are not. They they are level nines. What are they gonna do with twenty five grand? Maybe the economy is a bit different uh, because of the Pathfinder weirdness. But that's a lot of cash. We are here to find our. Uh, char- we've been charged to find Lady Kima. We need ass- assurances that we will find her, or at least some evidence of her. In the brazen house. halfling bitch went in there without my approval and wandered into the mines not to be seen. Well, so well, if she is down there, I hope she's in one piece. I can guarantee it. But if there's any place to find her, that's probably it. We're the group of adventurers for you. I don't know if you've heard <laughs> of the heroes of Iman, who just recently, I'm sure you've heard something, word travels oh. fast. Not beneath this mountain, it does enough human enclosures. We've just done a lot of good to the ruler of Amman. Great. How does that help us, dwarves? <laughs> We're saying is that we might, we would have to try too, and everything will be fine, and we've all been happy. Well, what we've discovered in our past adventures, however, is that every realm 
seems to be having trouble with the same sort of creatures coming up from the uh, oh. dark, perhaps? The All we're saying is, help us out. help you. What exactly have you seen before this day? More of the... Oh? Is this lore dump? Is this previous knowledge that we viewers do not have? Is Are these... Is this not the first time that they've seen sort of the Frankenstein type creatures? Mayhaps? Same? He sits back for other a creatures. The types of creatures, I do not know. Good question. I <laughs> mostly deal with the business and just know that there's some bullshit going on down in the mountains. <laughs> you could ask our foreman, Yiris. He's dealt with the cleanup each time we've had an incursion like this. So if anyone has information on what these creatures are, he'd be the one to talk to. Incursion. No, sorry, what is his word. name? Hearus. Yes. 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 Strong word. He's a foreman of the mine proper. All right. I think this this I think this seems like the sort of job we want to take. Yes. yes. Well, and we get paid for the monsters and creatures we've already slayed. <laughs> this this deal was not so in yet, so no. <laughs> but we thank you for your help. It, it, it is customary in our culture to to seal a deal with a drink. Truly. Or, as truly, I think you're truly. It's trying. <laughs> See, I wasn't was just fucking with you last week. It's <laughs> <laughs> a thing we do. <laughs> and since we are about to risk our lives. So. <laughs> Make a persuasion. Yes! Oh, I wasn't just Roll fucking good. with you. It's the first one. <clears throat> um, oh, it's, come uh. Come on, it, it. Come on Percy. Come on, 14. Uh, it's pretty good. Oh. Not great. Maybe. He gives you this long, it's possible. Distant, angry, dwarven, mistrusting stare. Rubs his chin, his well-kept blackened beard, and goes, But a sip, as it was a gift. <laughs> take it. He pulls the ale the barrel, which you guys provided, sets it on the side of his desk with the same spigot that you had placed in when you presented it earlier, and says, Take a bit. A bit. I'll put some in a bunch. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit. Uh, we have to save bit. some other dogs. Let me, let me take care of it. I'll pour everyone a glass. Oh, thank you, brother. Um, oh, boy. Uh, I take my empty water flask out that I emptied out before and am smiling and pouring uh, <laughs> glasses and also squirting a little bit here and there. I, I start to just play a little ditty on the flute. I, I thought I, we could accompany our, our sip with a little bit of music to, not to distract you, just to, just to. Why are they so intent on stealing this alcohol? Is it is it because they made a deal with some guards that they would get the guards a drink? But I really don't think that after they clear out this mines, they're the, maybe not the heroes of Craghammer, but at least, you know, honored guests, maybe, of Craghammer after they clear out this mine. They are not going to need to fulfill their end of the bargain with those random guards. I don't think. Maybe they will. They they know uh, Matt's memory better than me. Um, but this seems like a lot of risk in front of one of the major lords <laughs> for very little gain. Just <laughs> <laughs> to sort of accompany us. His nose <laughs> squits at the uh, at the the sound. When... Oh. Gnomish tunes aren't to my ears and liking. Mm. However, you do get an inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So go ahead and make us. A... <laughs> We can find a hand check on this. Hey, okay. That's a rogue. That's rogue skill. That's what we do, right? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh. Oh, yeah. You have inspiration dice. Inspiration dice are D8? Yep, you add a D8 to it as well. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. and I can add a D8 to this? Yeah, Correct. So here, uh, the ale is that good. Uh, oh, good. Now I'm at 19. Ooh! As he's listening to the gnomish Much music, better. kind of pushing it away with his hands, like, stop, stop, I don't. No. All right. I appreciate it, but I don't. <laughs> There's no accounting for taste. As you do that, your wine skin goes to full. <laughs> swollen. <laughs> Dude, I think it would be really cool for for live actual plays like this if you got um there were these dice that I saw called uh called go dice, I think is what they were called. Uh where they have a little gyroscope inside of them. You have to like charge them up or whatever. And when you roll, you can like see what they rolled in an app. If you could like work with the Go Dice folks, because they they also made like D and D shells, so I know that they have like tabletop gaming in mind. 
work you know if you're like a huge actual play like like critical role partner up with go dice so that people can see all of the players roles live like on screen like you know some sort of element rolls across the screen kind of like um kind of like the D D beyond roller where it like kind of rolls across the screen that would be oh that'd be sick i don't know i mean it's it's a technical challenge but all of the components exist uh for that to happen and i feel like a giant obviously you know critical role wasn't a giant brand at this point but for campaign three i feel like they can make something happen there one to its brim mm -hmm. uh, you switch over to one of the cups you pass around the drinks eventually all of you managed to get your drinks passed on Huzzah. to a contract a contract yes. Yes. Love the contracts <laughs> No 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 risking our lives no for money. Mm. How old is Nostock? Right. Oh, just out of curiosity. Uh, it's, not it's hard to tell. Dwarves have played a long time. Uh, he would be equivalent to like a human in his forties. I think he's like fine. Dwarven time, somewhere in his mid hundreds to late hundreds. It has been. Exactly. This is excellent. Mid aged. Oh, I know him from Quindendale. What do you know of a ball sack up in the tavern? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> uh, do I have that right? Bold, 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 also, that sort of comment is my preferred way for people to play cultural insensitivity. Like when, um, or, or I mean, somewhat even like, like I don't want to say racism, but like, you know, that, that sort of thing where it's just like purposely breaking social norms, uh, you know, as a player. The character is not purposely doing it. Um, but, but, you know, purposely kind of doing these things that are a little bit kind of off the wall would not be culturally good with dwarves is way better. And I think more entertaining and, and just, just better overall than, um, than like being like outwardly like mean or rude to them. Just like being oblivious, I think makes much better stories and more engaging characters. Uh, he kills it, dude. I love Travis. <laughs> I am loving him so far. I I I cannot wait to see more of him. I wonder if there's anything else uh, that he's that he's in. Grog is totally confident when you get things totally run, which is which is fun for a low int character. Exactly, exactly. Low int. I I feel like a lot of people I see just play kind of durher, like I don't I don't know what to do, but it's like Grog has understandable misunderstandings and goes with them and does not understand when people correct him like when when they're he's like oh ball sack and they're like i don't even remember what the guy's name was uh but they correct him and he's like right that's what i said ball sack <laughs> it's it's way funner than than being like a, a rude mean person or just like a um like a quiet uh, a uh, dumb person. <laughs> I think we did. We asked about him. Yeah, <laughs> also, uh, yeah, maybe we'll take a short rest before we leave this. <laughs> also, uh, welcome. This yes, could we do that? <clears throat> How are you doing? Short rest. Oh, yeah, that actually would be good stuff. Yes. If you'd like, if you'd like to do that, that that would be just taking a short rest outside. Probably not in the office proper. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can leave the premises. Cool like yeah, we'll just well, camp out inside of this dude's office for sure. You can as well. So, so uh, while you guys are taking a short rest, you're able to use any of your hit dice to heal up naturally. If you'd oh, like. cool. We don't naturally heal. Oh. And, I, uh, and that I is your natural healing. healing <laughs> Not the full. It's a continuation I, I was, I was sing a song of rest, and it goes a little something like, It's gonna make you feel good. It's gonna make you feel real good. Oh, I feel so. No, wait, you, you get an extra. Uh, I feel good. D6 roll I on your. I appreciate the Oh, on your heels? Yeah, on any hit dice. Oh, whatever you say. Hell yeah, Just one? Get in. Oh. Two. Nice. Oh, yeah. This is like the bard in, in my current game. Every single time he casts Vicious Mockery, he has to tell us what the insult is. What is the mockery? 
Uh, my favorite one from last session was we were fighting giant spiders. Uh, and oh god, I'm gonna get it wrong. But he was like, "It's me, itsy bitsy spider came up the water spout. Down came the crossbow bolt to flush the spider out." <laughs> Oh man, I it was it was a good one, but I I love Bard has really fun flavor. I remember, I think I privated it, but one of my first really long YouTube videos was responding to uh, responding to XP level three saying that Bards needed to be fixed, and I I thought that was a um I thought that was a bad take, and I was not alone. He made a retractment video after that, uh, because Bards are dope. <laughs> No, nobody, I didn't take any Yeah, I don't think it's... Uh, oh, so you got two views, it's it was not me that made him <laughs> retract right. it. I want to investigate you. It feels right. good. Uh, okay. Oh, 25. Mm. 25. A brief discussion with a few of the other wandering uh, dwarf miners that are in the outskirts of the building's <laughs> facilities. Uh, eventually lead you over to what is a small kind of uh, secondary it's building, maybe 200 yards off from the main mm -hmm. property. Uh, that apparently is where uh, Hiris resides and keeps watch over the entire establishment. So, I've tagged along. No, no, no. All right, Rusty, you going with her? Uh, yeah, we'll go with her. Right. The whole group. No, no. Why, why not? Why split the party? Um, all right, thank so God. Makes their way over to the outskirts of the building. It opens up, and uh, a dwarf opens a very uh, nice, kind of portly looking dwarf with a big tuft of a chin strap beard, a uh, big kind of reddish, ruddy nose, leather apron on. And he kind of opens the door. Hey, hello! Nice to meet you. What can I do for you? Uh, you must be Hiras? I am, I am. The foreman of this here fine mine. Wonderful hmm. to meet you. I've heard wonderful things about you. Oh, have you? Have you? Have from who? Uh, <laughs> from Lord Grayspine himself. Really? Mm. Oh. All right. Um, <laughs> Seems unlikely. Well, uh, how can I be of service? Um, we were curious. Um, I'm sure you witnessed all of this. Who decided that dwarves are, like, Scottish? Right? Is it is it literally just like a stereotype that Irish people and dwarvish people I don't even know if it's a stereotype if it's just that like Irish people are generally shorter and then at some point Irish became halfling and so dwarvish became Scottish it's just known I've never questioned it uh dwarves have always been Scottish and halflings are like Irish but <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a weird thing that we've all agreed on that that is the way it is there's wonderful goblins and trolls and other what I... nonsense coming out of the mine nasty lot it always makes my weeks that much more interesting weeks so this has been happening for quite a while unfortunately uh, at least five or six monsters my halflings are italians oh, oh, oh terrible hell kids. yeah <laughs> yes uh, I'm super just, like, down with that. Chin for living those <laughs> tiny little mobsters, like sm <laughs> like like nineteen like twenties era mobsters. Like <sighs> I can't do Italian. Halflings are Midwestern. That would make sense to me because they're all like you know they're in like their dirt kind of hovels. Uh, that one you know they're all like uh like uh, in like dirt contact homes out in like western kansas that's where all the halflings live i i feel that uh <laughs> i love the halfling mob that's that's a really fun that's a really fun one i mean we generally deal with the occasional goblin den we stumble across while opening new tunnels that's part of the norm mm. uh, but other nasty underground beasties and however over these past few weeks we've seen some real nightmarish things to the route of the shadows Many goblins stitched together with some kind of ball of screaming green limbs. Oh, God. Slimes and oozes oh. that would mutate and change color rapidly before seeming to dissolve on their own. Unstable looking, really, in their form. Like a goblin centipede. Or it sounds like a bit of. Uh, if you will, I. I... It sounds more like a, some type of necromancy. No, thank you. Perhaps, but they're not like that undead, one. per se. They're, they're, just, undead. they're still alive. Oh. At least from what we can tell. In whatever agony placed them in their physical form. Oh, that's even worse. Uh, we even had one brief run in with what looked like a like a Duragar that had swollen and sprouted what's, eyes and mouths Durigar, all across his body. That's that a was dark a sight. Dwarf, they that's are little fuckers, those. Yeah, are. <laughs> and he spits yeah. to the side. Oh, little Filthy little lost fuckers, souls. That's what they Dwarves are. evolved that turned to a darker god. Thankfully, they live far beneath the mountains, and usually far north enough to not cross us often to worry about it. But one of them found its way up here in this strange, awful, ma covered form. <laughs> it was terrifying. 
than the smell. <laughs> Mopping things up with your covered feet, you understand? <laughs> Uh, no, no, I like that. I like you muffing things up with your covered feet, you understand? <laughs> oh, that's great. I, <laughs> I love that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> anyway, um, we've even seen a few creatures from the surface that normally aren't found down here as well, which is strange. They don't wander down. Something's bringing them. Oh, Weirdest okay. thing. Anyway. Like what? Oh, and I just heard we had some weird, like, many-headed serpent thing that just got no. killed down there. We oh, just killed yes. one of those. That was you? Yeah, yes. our, our hero is right over here. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> he, he steps onto his back leg, shifting his weight, and cocks an awkward eyebrow. Really? <laughs> I'm really strong for my age. We were all surprised. <laughs> we're as surprised as anybody. How old is Scanlan? Here, so I have a. a, a How old is Scanlan? You know the mines very well, yes. I, I do. Oh. Uh, is there, <sighs> far from uh, asking you to draw some map, are there any uh, tunnels or or directions that we should avoid or particularly head towards? Anything uh, that we should. Mister DM, I swear I'm not asking for a map. <laughs> not within our minds. They're usually well guarded. Um, they were. Uh, also, do you have a map? <laughs> uh, of, of the mines, I, I do, I do. Oh, oh, oh that's going that. through his notes here. Yeah. I'll take that. <clears throat> that's where we're going, right? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. We're going in the hole. It's kind of haphazardly scrawled across a piece of parchment, but he hands yep. it over to you. <laughs> cool. Oh. Cool. And he says, says so that's, that's the front part of the mines. We've, uh, unfortunately, half of our tunnels have been sort of relinquished to close off some of these. Mm. Beasties coming through, so we're gonna have to recarve portions of the mine as we progress forward. It's kind of starting at square one, best we can. Uh, but that at least is uh, what we're currently working with. Uh, there is a subterranean level as well. Uh, there's a, we have an elevator inside that brings the various uh, mine carts to and from. But, Verticality. Uh, is there Very a particular cool. area on that map that um, most oh. of the baddies seem to be coming from? No, we've we've closed it off Just each time. Everywhere. <laughs> sort of everywhere. I mean, I instantly the thing that I heard that I really took away from that is there's a level and then there's another subterranean level and there's an elevator between the two. That is great for level nine characters because some of the more powerful spells can probably bust through those levels as well as you're adding a shortcut that they could break, they could use, enemies could use against them. All of this, like, having, like, you know, horizontal is fine, but the moment that you add verticality to your dungeon and or combat in general, I think that's the moment that things really kick into high gear. We've, we've had a few tunnels that come through, but we've managed to collapse those and make sure they're not coming through again. All right. All right. And we noticed the, the uh, I think it was a naga that we fought. It seemed to have several extra heads stitched on. Have you no knowledge of these creatures? It seems very odd. Is that oh, yeah. Dipping your printer paper in coffee, getting the tea bags involved, making it all nice and old looking. Hell yeah, man. I, I only. I haven't played in person since college. Um, yeah, it's I. It's so hard. Like there, there are so many. Um, there's there's a lot of good VTTs, and and I I do Discord and Roll Twenty as well. Um, but I I really do wish, I wish that there was a nice virtual there. You know, there's a nice virtual tabletop that allowed for good three dimensional play like easy three-dimensional play roll 20 just uh, doesn't quite get there um it's it's all right and you know they have the handouts that you can that you can give people you can embed images in there but that that's like graphic design i can't do that so uh, yeah it's um online play is really dope but i i do miss having a an in-person session that's that's one of the other things that i've been thinking about is is running a uh, an at home game with uh, with my wife and and some other people. Um, Roll twenty has such verticality as doom, dude. You said it. Even oh, I've thought about this so much. 
that they have layers. Like, they have spe a specific tool in Roll20. Let me just get on my fucking soapbox for a second. They have a tool that is called layers. They have the DM layer, the map layer, and the, the object layer. Why, as a DM, can I not add object layers? It's ludicrous. And why can my players not navigate between those layers on their UI? Like, imagine if you could make a multi-level dungeon with multiple different, like, tokens being on multiple different levels, and they layer on top of each other on the actual UI. Like, you know, maybe you can't see all of them at time. You have to, at a time, you have to switch between the layers. Right now, the closest that you can do to that is either have all of the layers on the same screen, but, like, you know, kind of displaced from each other and then you mark like the connections it's like oh like you know tunnel a goes to this other tunnel a uh, or you can have the different levels be on different pages and you have to like move the characters between that like the player view between that it sucks and they have layers so just make more let me make more ah is 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 ridiculous Roll20 works for battle maps, and that's about it. I agree. Maybe Hexcrawl. I'll give it Hexcrawl maps. That's it. <laughs> that's all Roll20 gets out of me, is, is battle maps and Hexcrawl maps. Otherwise, bleh, throw it out the window. <laughs> but I still use it, because what the fuck else are you going to use? Uh, if we could add layers like Photoshop into Roll20, that would be super mega coconuts. Oh my god, I agree. It, uh, and exactly, it's not like it's a revolutionary concept. It's in Photoshop. It's in GIMP. It's in Canva, probably. <laughs> so it's and if you did that, it would be so much easier to represent verticality, especially if players can move between the layers on their UI and they have the ability to shift their token between layers. So they say like, oh, I'm walking up the stairs. Shift to upper layer. Oh, mwah. if it, oh, if Roll20 puts out that update, it'll be Christmas. I'll make a video about it, man, because that would be, that would just be incredible. If, if Wizards of the Coast worked that into, like, the proprietary VTT that they're trying to shove down people's throats, it's like crafting in 1D&D. &D. If they make certain big changes, I might, I might, I might move my hair out of the way to listen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is there any connection in... Dwarven history or past, or this is totally out of the blue? No, no, not to my knowledge at least. I mean, most beasts we find are in one piece, not several together. Ah, uh, it's a bit disturbing to be honest. I told my nephew about it and he was crying for hours. Oh. <laughs> Do any of the beasts go back into them? Oh, I mean, uh -oh. oh, no, we've killed them as they came out each time. What a silly belly. They don't take anything back. <laughs> oh, for how I've seen them. Harris, um, do you know if there's any other entrances into the mine? Uh, Any maybe old secret tunnels? Something that someone could be using to get in? Not the mine. This is not preparatory. This is the business we run, so we don't have any ex internal or secret entrances. That would that would leave us open to an, a sort of a thief to come in and steal our mithril. Uh, and what's security like on the mine? There okay, okay. So, I, it would be understandable if this mine only had one entrance. Like, for the exact reason that that dwarf just gave. But there's a uh, there's a concept that I'm I'm actually making a video about right now called uh, uh, jaquessing the dungeon, and one of the big points that this concept uh, hits home. And you know, if you want to hear me explain the full thing, you'll just have to wait. I'm sorry. Um, but one of the big things that it hits home is uh, this is the adding multiple entrances and exits to your dungeon just heightens the possibilities so much it heightens it it, it it improves the dungeon uh immeasurably uh because bottlenecks while interesting are only interesting if they can be subverted it's this very interesting concept of if your players can fully blockade themselves in they should either need two blockades and there, and you know, one of those could fail at any given time, or uh, 
they they should have to be like kind of worried about it uh, because there could potentially be another entrance further on in the dungeon. Uh, yeah, I, I, we'll wait for the video for me to go into it more, but it's very interesting that she's asking about this because the concept of multiple entrances and exits in dungeons is one with actually a lot of discussion and like analysis around it. Is there any chance someone could have slipped in through Craghammer without you knowing, or is that all oh, locked I up? I highly doubt that, no other way our carvers are trained. Understood. <laughs> they are quite... That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Eh? Fine, dwarven study. <laughs> Before we go, um, what A strong ale. Finest of military classes. I... Ooh. Proud of them. What do you? Out of all the military classes the I know, they're the Raised best. Raised there, his whole family brought him up on that site. Military weapon training every day. Couldn't come out and play with the rest of us. I felt bad for him, but he grew up to be a right nasty dwarf. Hey. <laughs> you say had. Well, no. Unfortunately, he um was. Slain in one of the incursions, oh. uh, that Durgar I was telling you about. But such is the nature of the fighter, I, I suppose. Him. I'm so sorry. I appreciate that. To be honest, he was kind of a bastard, but um, <laughs> didn't miss him too much. Oh, but right. I appreciate the thought. That's very kind <laughs> of you. Literally or figuratively? I mean, still avenge him. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> he had parents. Or f he had parents. Yeah. Uh, we were related somewhat. I'm not going to say yes, too close, but a... ah, yes. Oh, not to you, to the other guy, Matt. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Laura. Um, when, we, when we take a rest, do we get our spells back for the day? It's not a short rest, that's a <gasps> long rest. Right, cool. which, which is Just why wondering. we're going to go take a proper nap. Oh, are, are we going to take yeah. a nap? I think we should yes. go buy some potions and I take a nap. So. It, off the top of my head, are warlocks the only short rest caster? Is that right? I know wizards eventually get a feature where they get... Uh, they get some slots back, but it's not even all of them. But they get some back, I think, on a short rest. Are Warlocks the only one? I thought Rangers might. But I could be wrong. Yeah, Wizards get stuff as well. Hmm. But no no Paladins, none of the Half-Casters? Interesting. Interesting. Actually, is Ranger even a Half-Caster or are they a Quarter? I don't know. Maybe I'll look it up I in the other tab. Really I'm bad. going to. There's, I mean, so, we're about okay. to put the dust <laughs> forward <laughs> action, and then there's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, all right, all right, all right. Hi. Right, right, right. Let's go and get drunk and go to sleep then. All right. And, <laughs> but, there you go. And, and stock up. Druids yes. may get wild shapes. Mm. So of course, I'm happy to. Oh, one last question. Um, well, it doesn't have to be last. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. I don't get visitors oh. too often up here in my booth. You should come. You should come drink with us at the tavern. Uh, okay. So last episode, I talked about how I don't like uh, NPCs that are just giant lore dumps, and I think that uh, there was an NPC in the first episode that was really guilty of this. Uh, it was the it was the tavern keeper uh, who just existed to dump lore on the players' heads, uh, and, and and that was it. Uh, and eventually they literally dismissed the tavern keeper and Matt narrated how there was like a line of people behind waiting to talk to her. And I was like, that's, uh, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, you know, NPCs do not exist uh, to talk to you. You should rarely be in the position where you can dismiss them unless they like have a reason to actively be hanging out and talking to you. Like, unless you're like friends or they want something from you, NPCs should not just give you unlimited information and wait until you dismiss them. In this situation where Matt is directly giving the reason that this dwarf is like wanting to hang out. Like he's like, oh man, I'm kind of lonely. <laughs> and so now he is just with that like little interaction, he has crystallized why he's a lore dump NPC and made it feel all right in that like, oh yeah, he wants to help the characters because he doesn't get a lot of visitors. He likes the company. Like that little bit can take an NPC from feeling kind of weird and like taking people out of the scene to making them like a lovable, uh, endearing sort of character that is now an, a good ally for the party. Well, I have to stay here and uh, oh. work uh, at least oh, for the nice. next six yeah, hours. Six hours. Six more hours. Oh, uh, but I have some dried fruits. Uh, I've got oh. some meats inside. I've got two chairs and 
Um, and you get to fit my lap, and he kind of pats you on the head. I've killed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, this, well, this is what needs a whore. Sorry. Fair enough. Um, uh, also, okay. apparently, my mic's a bit loud. Oh. Maybe we'll it down a bit for you guys. What's your mic? Right? Yeah, exactly. Forget that. You heard nothing. It's a strange echo in the caverns of Frog Exactly, anyway. Justin. Right. They'd, they'd ask the everything oh, of everyone. We'll yeah. come see you again, Harris. We're late for that. Thanks. Of course, anytime. Ah, oh, when I'm not busy. Good day. But when I'm not busy, you're welcome to come by. All right. Oh, that'd be nice. Right. Tell you what, when we drag our asses out of that mine, we'll come straight to you. And we'll have some of that dried fruit. We're lost. <laughs> I'll save a batch for you, you half half lass. <laughs> that dried fruit. I did, I already did. It. You did it already. <laughs> She's good I, at winking. I saw it was a good wink. Yes. <laughs> I made my tingle in my shoulder. I need to stop <laughs> pausing that so much. I, we are the diabetes. We are an hour into stream <laughs> and only 35 <laughs> minutes into the episode. <laughs> and <laughs> I skipped like 10 <laughs> minutes. Right. So I need to stop back pausing to the, so back much. Back to the tavern. Is regular. All right. All right. All right. Over to Jeff's no. okay. right. Back to the tavern. Yeah. We go back to... Uh, oh, no. What? The Iron Hearth Tavern, <laughs> right? Is that what it's called? Okay. Those yeah. rocks, that's West Country, is the answer. Yes. Um, actually, uh, Cornwall. Oh. How, what time is it? Should we buy potions now? It's more underground. Yeah. Uh, as far oh, as you guys it know, open? it's somewhere in the neighborhood of it sunset ish afternoon. Oh, the stores <laughs> did <laughs> summer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's, like, like, check. it's like right. Las Vegas. It's always twilight. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if you all don't mind, I suggest we... Um, item up a bit. I, I, I would like to, before it gets too late and we get too drunk, uh, go back to the uh, lightning main uh, manor, lightning cage. Oh, House Thunderbrand? Nice. House Thunderbrand. <laughs> Where do we item up? There's do we get potions and stuff somewhere? Yeah, that's what we're looking for. When you say too drunk, do you do you mean we the adventurers or the, or the humans <laughs> back in Los Angeles? Both. Both, Both parties. Both. Cross plane. Um, <laughs> Cross uh, realm. <laughs> And uh, I because and I tell them what happened again. Uh, I, uh, I went well. I went to this door because oh yes 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 yes. I remember. Nearly um, arrested, shot arcane magic. Hard to remember magic. everything that all magic. seven of them do. Go down into this cave. Perhaps they have some insight into what's going on there as well. Right. Especially true. at this point. Well, yeah. let's go and try to get all they go to sleep. Yes. I want stuff. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I probably have uh, probably have some luck stuff. with more than like plant stuff or like potion stuff. Have you found? Uh, oh, have you had any luck finding uh, an arcane? Oh, uh, just, mm. that's what we're about. No, I know that. Um, <laughs> did you send any fireballs at doors again, like you've done in the past, or? Uh, I guess I knocked as I do often right. do, <laughs> and it, uh, nothing doing. Knocked. All Good. right. Got it. So magic <clears throat> stuffs. Let's go find them. All right. So wait, well, well, uh, uh, you, I mean, it seems like they really don't want you in their door. It seems like very heavily guarded, so what's our plan? We're just well, it was try night time again. before, maybe they'll we're gonna be do more... We're, we're, we're going to wing it. We're going to try it again. I think it was night time. I think it was like daytime mm. before. There you go. Mm. Oh. <laughs> okay. Maybe if you knock with more people. I, I want to back to the door, because we're all just standing outside the door. Correct. Uh, right, I walk back to Hiris' door and knock on it and poke my head in. Uh, Hiris, I'm sorry. Uh, you catch him with a handful of dry food. Oh, hi! Uh, uh, just a quick question. We have no fucking idea what time it is. Uh, <laughs> Do you know what hour it is? Our business is open at the moment. He reaches over and grab, grabs this kind of really awesomely intricate piece of clockwork on his desk. Mm. It's this like brass cylindrical piece. That, as he pulls out, you hear this. That would be important. And springs and things making strange whirring sounds. Oh, I reckon it's about two hours from sunset. Oh. Oh, very good. Are the, are the stores open at the moment? Better question. <laughs> as far as I know, hey. All right. Depending on the store. How much time do we have left? A few hours. Oh, thank you, sir. Right. <laughs> you sure you want to stay? Let's go shopping. Oh, oh we got to go. Sorry. Sorry. They, they already narrated how, like, uh, it kind of depends on the dwarf. It depends on everything that uh, some dwarves don't keep, like sunrise, sunset time. Um that's really interesting for like how you run stores, how you run taverns. It feels like most stores would probably be they they would I feel like they would have to coordinate. Kind of like how in Spain, if you don't know, in Spain, I think it's at like 1 p.m. or something or noon, all the stores shut down for like an hour and a half cuz everyone in the fucking country takes a nap. It's very weird. Uh, but very interesting. 
And I feel like the the dwarves would need something like that where they all agree on a certain time of day, but then they're open otherwise. Because, like, a store can't truly be open 24-7. At least, like, most establishments can't. Um, you need, like, time for, like, maintenance and to clean and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I feel like they would all have to like agree on a time where it's like, oh yeah, between these hours on our clockwork pieces, we're all shut down. I don't know. Bye. It's the mind that never <laughs> sleeps. Good luck. Do the door behind you when he starts waving you guys? Stay safe. <laughs> Stay regular. Take it. Love on. that guy. Eat some veggies. <laughs> oh, I, I, stick, I put my head back in the door and I throw him a turkey leg and a, a beef jerky strip. <laughs> Uh, I gotta get rid of this the, stuff. It's been in here. The fact that you just <laughs> checked your inventory for that worries me. As the uh, <laughs> got a lot of shit. Like the, bag of holding. <laughs> the, the bag of holding, not so much a freezer. <laughs> I didn't say it was good. <laughs> I just want it out. The uh, the mildly rotted turkey leg <laughs> across the floor. Oh. The remainder of what, what, what was once oh, meat now a slush slawing off the bone as it slams across the stone it's floor. It's really tender. You're a you're the lion. Don't eat anything. Yeah, those are the best parts. <laughs> Grog, you see, he immediately steps back and his face squints back. It's not polite, Grog. <laughs> I gave him a turkey leg. You're it's just the thought really that comes. As he yeah, closes I'm his a, door. Uh, so but, you know. Well, well, where it was. Before he does that, I cast Present Digitation and I clean it up real quick. Okay. Yes. Oh, really how good. nice. And I hand him a parchment and going, if there's anything wrong, just write a message on this and uh, <clears throat> we'll come help. Oh. I hand him a parchment from the scroll tell scripture that I, I, I made. Oh, how nice. How many pages does that... I have like endless? I have like I made like fifteen tickets right now, and it takes me like an hour to. Come. He takes it from you with trepidation. Awesome. You can see he probably hasn't encountered a dragon board often. He's like, thanks. <laughs> Remember, dragon board, we're good. <laughs> so dragon board, we're you. good. Do you want to go with him to the enchanting place? Or do you want to go? I think, I think I will go with him just to keep him from setting fire to the entire city. All right, city. should we all go to the yes. manor? We, we have time, we might as well. All right. Are we getting, are we adding up first? Do, 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 I think we do that after. I think we'll do that. I'm going to go ahead and turn into a squirrel and hide in your pocket. I like it. Okay. Oh, Grog. What? It was a bird. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it better. Technically in character. What's worse from the other end of the <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're going to. Uh, thank God they're all Thunder staying Thunder together Thunder and all going to uh, the same place so that we don't have to. Brand. Brand. All right, so uh, Tiberius leads you to where it's residing. I'm not insanely against off, splitting the party, but with this place, many people, oh yeah. Very well way. kept <laughs> green lawn that stretches for a good 60 feet before you see this this really beautiful looking alabaster and gold building, uh, slightly domed with these four towers at each corner with these blue kind of pointed crystals at the top of each tower. Uh, the grass? Can I? Can we see any traps or almost like uh, all you, that are He points active? out to you as you approach. There are a series yeah, of stone Eastern. sickles carved into the stonework that surrounds the exterior of the lawn. Those things. Oh, actually, yeah. Okay. Can we Before look around and scroll. see if there's any scroll, yeah. way to a uh, bell to ring that's outside of that area? Uh, go make perception check. Yeah, you already did it. <laughs> can I assist on that? Oh. Oh. Tell me now. Yeah, the please do, because I rolled a one. Uh, uh, one um, baby. I failed it hard. I failed it. If you roll the one, there's nothing I can do anymore. What do you roll? We ain't found shit. Roll the one, naturally. I did. Best you can tell, Stoneworks pretty solid. Cool. Hey, it's a house. Yeah. There are dwarves around. No. No, as you look about, it's hard to tell the nature. This looks just like a lawn with a well framed stone exterior. Cool. But there's no fence. There's nothing keeping you from walking into the lawn and towards the building. Can I kind of do a, uh, <clears throat> a nature check to see what light source is making all this grass grow, or if it's like magical growing? No nature check required. There is no light source other than the green rocks that generally permeate the the interior hmm. of Craghammer to give its kind of yeah. strange luminescent atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of dull red glow that's around the entire city, other than a couple of sparks of lantern light. I there's what no Keyleth light source. is doing. She's squeaking an awful lot. Oh, that's right! She's 
So we just walk up. And Can I pet her a little bit? <clears throat> no, I, I don't suggest that, Grog. Uh, no. <laughs> I shoot firebolt. I forgot that was What's water. There's a front door. Right Did you now? actually try uh, to walk up? <laughs> Okay, is there a front door? No. From what you can see, there appears to be a large. Before you do kind of, anything, uh, just try and walk. Almost up. like a beech wood. That's true. I do think Tiberius just cast a bunch of magic and just yelled, and no one responded. I don't think he actually tried to walk through the wall, which I won't be too harsh on him for, because if you you know figure out that there's a force field, a lot of times force fields really hurt. So I, I can imagine why he wouldn't uh, want to try that, especially all alone. The light wood do double door. Yes. You have the front door. Oh, I'm going to use my rogue abilities to walk to the front door and uh, knock on it. Great. Sorry, Brock. Okay. I have one job. Is that like a, is that a talent? Or... Is that a talent? Is that a feat? So, you... I will say something interesting. You know, she asked to, to cast Perception. A lot of times, you know, it's an interesting moment for uh, not cast perception, role perception. Uh, it, it there's there's a conversation around like, oh, like is my character paying attention? Would my character also do this physical uh, task? And it's a bit easier with athletics because a lot of times when you're doing an athletics check uh, to say bust open a door or jump across a thing or grab a boulder there is a certain natural limit on how many people can do a given activity it's a little bit weirder with like the sensory things like insight or or perception where i don't know this is this is kind of an open question to anyone watching you know put your put your responses in the chat about how you handle uh, when multiple people could do a physical action and then one person is like, oh, I want to see if I can see anything. Great role perception. And then the other people, do you then like say like, okay, everyone role perception? Is that one person that asked like taken as like a group perception role? Do you allow assistance? I always think that's that's sort of interesting. There's a larger conversation around like, you know, how many times can you repeat uh, physical checks? Normally I allow people to repeat infinitely, but when it matters and when I am having them like roll, there's normally some sort of clock where like the longer that they take, the worse things will go for them. Uh, so that's kind of the natural deterrent to just like rolling through physical checks over and over and over. Um, but for something like this, where they're clearly in no danger, but there is also something that Matt wants to keep hidden. How do you handle, especially with this many people, if all seven of them roll perception, one of them's going to get it just statistically like 7d20. One of them is passing the DC, no matter what their modifier is. Like, I guess just, that's just how it's, it's going to happen. Um, so I think it's it's an interesting thing to think about as a DM on kind of what your limits are when it comes to those sorts of repeated checks or those sorts of like, oh, my character does this and then everyone else in the party is like, oh, I want to do that too. Like, do you let them? Do you not? Depends. You walk towards the, the grass. Yes. You step onto the, the walkway that leads towards the front of the building. As soon as you cross into the threshold yeah. where those stone sickles are, you make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> oh, no. Roll well, my This is brother. really not good for that business. Um, uh. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve. Oh, no. So as you pull your cloak around you and take a few steps to jaunt upward, suddenly there's, you guys hear it, this strange sound, a little poof, poof of arcane blue energy kind of just pulses around his feet. You instinctively begin to pull back, but as you do, there is a blast of blue electric energy that streaks out from all around you, shocking your body and throwing you about 15 feet back, straight onto your shoulders. You <laughs> skid to a halt. Oh. Yes, which come one of these I roll for damage? <laughs> Ele electrified sound effect. You take. <laughs> oh, I can't hear that. 14 points of. As is what I was talking about with Tiberius. I do not blame Tiberius for not wanting to futz around with the uh, with the big bad. <laughs> electrical system. Lightning damage. All right. Oh. This is as I'm paused telling him not to do that. Yes. <laughs> Drew! Well. You let me go. Your muscles eventually relax. All right. 
As I was about to say, we have a that was going a, to happen. We have a flying carpet. That's true. Hey, we have a flying carpet. I, let me try one thing that I didn't think to do last time. Yeah. We have classic a flying, carpet. flying carpet. I'm going to cast Dispel Magic on the Runestone. Don't okay. tase me, bro. Go ahead and uh, really let's see. Pull it out. What? Pull out the flying carpet. Yeah, no. Phrasing. It's real fast. Oh, Spell magic. Going for the hand. Yeah, oh, yeah, we, we are saying that again. Oh, oh, the magic card. Oh, oh, the magic card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guys, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, to oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and I cast it at uh, in my fourth level slot. You want to cast it? Dispel magic. Dispel magic. All right, make. It's a great idea. Let's make an arcana check. It can't carry you. You're too heavy. I say it's you, Oh, give me that. Uh, uh, 13? 13? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as you concentrate... If the whole party wants to roll, I'll make it a group check. Otherwise, I'll allow two people or one with another helping. I think... I think that's a fair way to do it. That's I, I generally land somewhere in that zone unless it really makes sense for each of them to individually do it. Because I feel like otherwise, if it's just like each of them individually doing it, the chances that they make it are, they just skyrocket. Uh, I really like, there's actually a, a system that I think answers, well, not I think, sorry, that just does provide answers to this uh, very explicitly within the rule set, which is uh, Blades in the Dark, bit D. Uh, they have a whole, it's it's actually not that big of a section, it's like two pages, um, that goes over rules for teamwork, whether that is taking group actions, uh, taking, you know, helping someone, taking the consequences for someone, uh, it's, I, I think it provides a really good framework for how to do those sorts of things, but also... It's very tied in with stress, so it doesn't really make sense to port to other systems that don't have that as a uh, as a downside. Um, but I, I like the I like the strategy of just like make it a group group check or make it a uh, an advantage thing with one person helping. And these kind of shimmering bands of arcane energy wave off of your hands towards the enchantment. They impact and dissipate without effect. Uh, is the is the are they fourth level or higher? They seem to be. Book. Um, I hop on the flying carpet. <laughs> okay, so you pull the flying carpet, Mary Poppins style, out of the bag yes. of holding. <laughs> Classic. And see if I can fly up and over to the door. Do you want to tie a rope around your waist in case that comes back? It's a flying magical carpet. Somebody. Uh, oh. Is that bad? Is that a bad idea? No, do it! It's a flying what magical carpet. Like, what can happen? I think happen? I'll just like hit a wall. What if the flying carpet gets ruined? Let's not do yeah. that. Yeah. What? Um, oh my god. Okay. It's, really, it's not going to be ruined. Here. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. I what sort of, okay, what sort of magical force field is just a fence with an open top? It, I, <laughs> I, I think that they are right to be hesitant. I think it is... <laughs> Highly unlikely that this magical barrier is not some sort of dome rather than like a literal fence that just has an open top. Heck, a bird could just waltz on in there. Someone with a ladder could get could get it. It would not be a, a very good force field, in my opinion. I'm, I'm in squirrel form. Oh. So I go I go out. Oh, and you're with me! Mm -hmm. Let's both fly to the door. I have nine healing Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What? what? Hold on. You turned invisible and walked inside a house last time. I can't <laughs> do whatever you want. Do you want me to knock on the door? Is that all we're trying to do? We're trying to, yes. Oh, yeah, you too. Okay, so, yes, I send an unseen servant to knock on the door. What kind? Like a, 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 Right on the door knocker, like hanging on the door knocker. <laughs> Feet touching right. the ground. <laughs> so the the distance in which unseen servant can be summoned, oh, oh, I believe no. you may be able to actually summon it within the boundary of those arcane sigils. I'm okay. just sitting back here holding the carpet. All right. I can show you the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sixty feet. So yeah, you go ahead and you walk up to where the sigil is. You finish your spell. You cast unseen servant. Mm, unseen servant, ho! <laughs> Which he says every time. Yes. Every yeah. single time. Um, 
you see this strange shift of air as some sort of humanoid form then materializes in the op opposite side of this boundary and stands at your ready in command. I mean, it's unseen. We still haven't so knocked on the door, correct? Yeah. No, no, it's about, okay. a, about a 60 foot it's walk. The front door. I command the unseen servant too. That's really funny that he's like, oh, it materializes or whatever you see it. It's it's in the name. It, you guess it, it. It's it's just there. I mean, I understand for narrative purposes why it makes more sense to narrate it being created, but it is it is literally unseen. I don't. <laughs> it's invisible. It kind of saunters over. You guys see this kind of shifting barely, barely visible form make its way up to the front door. In the distance, you hear a dull... Eventually, the door slightly opens, <laughs> and you see a hunched figure with bright white, shock white hair kind of look out the doorway. Oh, where she come from? Looking at the oh, form in front of him. ghost? <laughs> yeah. That's where you come from. All right. Hello. I'm waving. Hello. Opens the door, comes out. You now see this this dwarven figure, uh, hunched, very very old, with a long, very very well crafted brass staff. It looks like a black or purple gem at the top. Mm, um, spectacles at the tip gay. of its nose, and it begins like to that. kind of shift its way over towards you. <laughs> Watch out for that rune. It's still on. <laughs> 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 Eventually making its way. Uh, He's coming towards us. Yes. Yeah. Walks right to the edge of the of the uh, the sigil. Puts his hand up, and the unseen servant vanishes. Oh. oh. Yeah. So, you have my attention. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name's Tiberius Stormwind. These are my friends. He puts his hand up, and there's no sound coming out of your mouth. <laughs> oh, oh. Maybe we should listen. This is the one who rudely attacked our home abode not more than a few hours ago. Mm. He has emotional problems. <laughs> Apparently. Yes. Um, he needs to learn respect for other people's problems. Yes, he does. We, we agree wholeheartedly. He's dragonborn. He's weird. He's a little <laughs> weird. Um, we're sorry to uh, interrupt. I don't know. It's dinner time, I think. Um, I don't know if you've heard yet, it just happened. We just fought some sort of many-headed beast down at the mines, and uh, Lord Greyspine is sending us in. Getting another so faction we involved, go, interesting. We were sent here, we were told you were the dwarf to speak to if we needed... To uh, know about the magical well, entities. To, no, I think it was just to get shit. Oh. <laughs> that's... that. That's fair. That's, that's very fair. Uh, uh... Whoa, I was going to try to read your name, but that is crazy. Tenox's fun? Tenox's fun? Anyways, Tenox's fun. Um <laughs> I I think that's fair. I've I've heard a lot of people um kind of say that they will limit uh certain actions to only those with proficiency. So the only people that can assist on a check have to have proficiency which I think is very fair, especially when you have this many people, uh, is only allow people to assist on checks if they have proficiency in it. I also think that makes a lot of sense for like um, for tools, checks. Um, but it's Justin just changed my name. <laughs> oh, hi, Justin. Um, oh, yeah, you have the same profile picture. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I think that... Um, I think that's... that's a. Uh, it's a good point. That's that's fair. Uh, proficiency is a. It's not you know written into the book, obviously, but I think that that's a good indicator when people have enough skill to even be able to help. Because like right, if you're not proficient in alchemist tools, how are you gonna really assist someone else who's trying to make an alchemist tools check? Like if there was something like half proficiency or, or half advantage or something maybe but yeah i think proficiency is something to keep in mind with that ready for those entities <laughs> if you're looking to buy trinkets and magical <laughs> <auditory Trinkets. bonds. laughs> you've come oh, to the yeah. wrong place <laughs> this is a house of study yes this is where a hard-working dwarves of the arcane persuasion put their lives towards pursuing the magical forms yes. and fields and that... we have come to seek your knowledge i'm sorry 
No, it's, it's, that's what I'm trying to say. Is I came here looking to ask about the arcane studies. I'm extremely interested in that. When I heard that your study. house was the only one that was in that particular study, I was immensely intrigued. I respect the arcane art so much as that it's all it's been my life. And <clears throat> right now, we're in a pretty of a situation where we have to go slaughter a bunch of Nazis in apparently one of your mines, and uh, we don't know the source. And it appears to be of a, an extreme arcane nature of the dark sense. And I figured we could come to you for help and, 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 and some kind of guidance. And I would stab me with you somewhere. And, uh, and, uh, and it appears that you very well know something that we could learn from. With all due respect, of course. Make me Holy check. shit. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Breathe. Uh, 11? This okay. has been middly. Terrible uh, the, rolls today. The dwarf yeah, gives you kind of a disapproving sorcerer. brow shift and goes, Look, I mean no disrespect, but understand, this is a dwarven house of arcane practitioning and strength. Mm, so there's still dwarves among you. Dwarf. I think our business here is concluded. Oh, oh, if no. you're looking to buy stuff, we produce and sell through the value of valor house. Of Satan. Oh, Tiberius. Of course, sir. I, we completely understand if you're not up to such a challenge. It makes perfect sense and we'll be more than happy to go and buy some wares somewhere else. Oh. This is too much for you. Challenge. <laughs> I will send you my associate. Uh, no, the dwarf no, turns around and begins walking away with the staff. Yes. I told you he wasn't up to it. Is I'll cast, uh, yeah, I'm cast Alter Self on myself. Yeah, yeah. Be a dwarf. And, and jump behind me. And act like you just. <laughs> <laughs> you were just Actually, sir, we have the on me. I'm a squirrel in her pocket. Oh shit! Ridiculous. Then. <laughs> uh, we have a, a dwarf with us who um, wanted to actually say hello What's to your you. What's your dwarf name? Turns around. Keyleth, where have you been? Saunters back. I guess it's Keyleth. <laughs> Looks at you. Keyleth Crackhammer. Yes, crack Still has that dwarven uh, excellence. Interesting. Smiles for a second as he looks at you and goes. Ah, well, how nice to meet you. Where are you from? Oh, hello. Leaf and laugh and laugh and laugh and Yeah, from Stephen. Show got a chip. Different mountain. Different mountain across the sea. I hail from the mountains. What oh, can She had an accident <laughs> on the way over here. And <laughs> We were hoping maybe. Roll a persuasion roll. Oh, with no. disadvantage. Oh, you. Oh, roll with disadvantage. Oh, oh. Let the dice act better than us tonight, please. Wait, persuasion? I don't have to. Oh, wait, I have a zero. Eight. Oh, that's oh. Eight. Now roll again. Oh, I have advantage? No, you have, no. oh, have disadvantage. Oh, I have disadvantage? So eight. 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 <laughs> You're freaked oh. out. I've been practicing the arcane arts for over 250 years. And I've been practicing my Cornwall accent for five minutes. <laughs> Shit. He raises his hand, and the altar self spell dissipates. Where stands Keyleth? Hey. Oh, Keyleth, hey. you've been lying to us this whole time? <laughs> Who are you weren't a dwarf? We you were a Wait. dwarf. Back steps oh. forth, steps in front of Keyleth, and says, Good Sir Dwarf. Oh, no. <laughs> Clearly, we are Dude. idiots. We That's are... the first true thing you've said since you called me out of my. Stay with me on this. <laughs> we are strangers in a strange land. However, we are working with Lord Greyspine to enter your minds and end the. Dude, if I'm Matt Mercer, you, you've lost me at this point. Uh, this, is, this is your last chance. You get you get the persuasion roll. If you do something creative, you get the persuasion roll with disadvantage. After this is this is it. If this is not convincing, he's gone. <laughs> the evil that is spewing forth for them. Now I know that we are a bit stupid <laughs> in a number of ways. But yes. we fight well. But we fight well and we have the best of intentions and when it counts, we're there. We just need a little bit of help going into the mines. And again, Lord Gracemine himself sent us, so please excuse my cornhole challenge friend. My, my cornhole friend. We are here to help. 
I promise. That's a very Disney moment. That wink, was wink, oh. wink. Hey, babe. I Make a persuasion twice. roll with this advantage. Can I, can I assist roll. him because I winked? No. Damn it. I don't That's know about that. Wait, this is wait, generous. Not, this not is the way generous. this conversation's been going. No, apparently not. Oh, hello! <laughs> Best roll of the night. Oh, I rolled, rolled a 20 20. and a 17, so 19. 19. Finally. <laughs> he glares at you through those. If Matt really wanted them to have this. <laughs> I've said my piece. Good luck to you all. Oh. 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 Further. You just the 20. Further. 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 One more try. Further. 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 There must be away. so many arcane things down there that we will discover and bring to you upon oh. upon finding them. No. Things that you could Matt, Matt, stay strong. Do not let them just keep going. Stay strong, Matt. Use for your research. Historical items. As he's still walking away, you hear him shout over his shoulder. And when you bring them... Then we'll talk. Okay, that's fair. Till then, good day. That's fair, fair enough. Don't bother me when I'm eating. Thank this, you, Lord Thunderclap. Oh, this game has consequences. <laughs> no. well, at which he shouts again in a booming, oh, booming presentation voice. It's Thunderbrand. That's what I meant. You hear the door slam. <laughs> Boom. That was fun. Oh, that was right. Great. Well, that went Should well. we go buy some potions, yes, then? Yeah. All right, I was planning on taking a break at uh, at the one-hour mark. This is as good a time as any. I'm going to take a short uh, bio break, take a, take a pee, take a poop. I don't know, whatever. That was. I don't know why I said that. Uh, <laughs> go take care of your needs, fill up your water, and uh, and we will be right back.
Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. Ah, oh, how's it going, everybody? You have a good break. I had a good break. Uh, I am I am heating up the second part of my liquid dinner. So I'll have to run and get that in a second. But we can just we can just hop right back into it. I'll turn off the music. And we're good to go. Guys, let's go by. He gave us one bit of information. The, the Valve of Valve of, What is it? Valor of. Volvo? The place to go by the, the house. Ocean. The house of Valor. Oh, the of, house of. No, the Valor. Yeah, no. That's not the house of Volvo, Scanlon. <laughs> It's value the, of valor. The, the value, value of valor. valor. If you want to visit the house of Volvo, you would have right. a great time. Yeah. 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 Let's go find that. Right. right. It's not Let's go to the, the value of valor. Yes, I didn't think about the fact that I was going to have to do an accent. Oh, yeah. I'm not yeah, good with that. Don't think so. things through. It's okay, Keelan. Women fighting not ale. Good with that stuff. My job. So after right. a bit of discussion, you manage to make your way around the town. You eventually find your way to the value of valor, which is a... Terrible. <laughs> It's a stone building, uh, like reddish brick. It looks in its construction with fine purple. Uh, please be okay. Can, can please I, be okay. Please. <laughs> uh, fine purple tapestries in the front that show various battles of old dwarven history, uh, with two glowing enchanted uh, permalite uh, lanterns hanging from the front, Classic. and an entryway, entryway that is currently open, and a warmly <laughs> lit interior welcomes you. Awesome. So easy. Hey, before we go in there and just make asses of ourselves, yes. speak for yourself. As a group, what do you think we need to get down into potions. these mines? Healing, 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 healing potions, potions, some light sources. Yes. We don't need climbing anything. I have a harness. I have, I have, climbing I have some climbing gear, gear but mm. is that that's included in the dungeoneering kit, right? Oh, yes. Gear? What yes. about yeah. something for breathing? Like, what if Maybe. we get trapped down there with no oh, air? Maybe. You know what I'm you can be oh. Don't worry about that. We'll she can make plants, and we'll get. Plenty of oxygen. Yeah, oxygen's plus, good, although if we have something uh, to help with poison. Okay, the, the kettle just went off. I will, this one is going to be very quick. I will be very, very right back. Sorry. Oh gosh, I'm sorry about that. This is <laughs> this is what happens. This is what I do when I uh, stream during dinner time. Is uh, I still want to eat dinner, but I also don't want giant chewing noises on the mic. So I make this nice little concoction. This little potion. Uh, to so that way I can just drink my dinner. Much more acceptable for stream. Uh, all right, and we will jump back in. That might be good. Next time we get yeah. some antidotes. Uh, how good. much gold do we have at the moment? That is a wonderful question, brother. By the, by the way, I pull out a bottle of it's air. It's around... like, or, or just an empty bottle. I go, and plus we have this. <laughs> we will so don't more than air. double. <laughs> Our gold if we take this mission, sir. So. so we got like 24,000 gold. Dude. Less than that. Ish. 23 gold. <laughs> Less than that. More than double, that means it could be 1,000. This is true. Because anything is more. Gold. I don't like sharing. Math is stupid. So. All right, we go into the house <laughs> of Volva. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Open your Volva! <laughs> Math is stupid and you're a trash. not. It's class. <laughs> 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 Oh, you sure you don't want to think about renaming it it's now? So long, guys. Come on! <laughs> All right. So. Oh man, dude. I you. I, 
It's so funny. Players naming things has a uh, long and storied history in my campaign uh, that uh, started uh, with with some names that I cannot repeat now on stream uh, because I was dumb, edgy high schoolers uh, in in the early 2010s not not names that i'm proud of but uh <laughs> naming naming things having players name things i always go along with it if i don't always already have a name in mind uh because you know a lot of times you're uh, you're describing someone or something and they say well what's the name huh it's like oh shit so i i i always like to have players name things they tend to remember names that they make up is at least what i find part <laughs> Your giant boulder falls over um, <laughs> All right, so you uh, make your way inside, suddenly hit with the smell of heavy incense yeah. and jasmine. Yes. Uh, this is the equivalent of the Psychic Eye Bookshop. You, uh, oh, my God. Bookshop. We were just there. We were just there. Oh, okay. You uh, <laughs> walk inside. There's not a lot of folks in, inside looking about the establishment, uh, but there is one person sitting at the front desk, which is a, a beautiful mm -hmm. long oak table. A real shopping kind of scene. A, uh, we have not <laughs> seen how Matt uh, handles how shopping. Actually, you can see there what appears to be an elven individual. Does he just offer them a bunch of different things? Like, does he just say like, okay, you have like X, Y, and Z, or does he have the players inquire about what items they want? I think that this is actually a bit of a divergence in DMing style of here's the menu, or what do you want? Let me find it for you. Uh, that could set a little bit of a tone and a little bit of precedent in my mind for how he's going to handle it going forward. Sitting at weight, hair pulled back behind the ears, a very, very slight, thin build, and smiles you enter and says, Welcome to my establishment. May we I help you? We suppose stand a little taller and oh, try to yes. look more noble. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. It's a beautiful shop you have. Huh? It's so uh, startling to find a, uh, an elven establishment here in the middle of Craghammer. Uh, how did this come about? Well, they didn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> and I found there was perhaps money to be made in starting one. <coughs> I've been here for over a hundred years. Oh, shh. Uh, so business is good? No, yeah. we are not. Oh, so good. Good. Mm. No. I was have a hard time I buying from those who are not before. But I've made my establishment. Well. Connections and business oh, God, really? yeah. individuals. So uh, I do. Uh, what can I help you? Yeah, very interesting. We just left uh, the guy that clearly supplies this store, and uh, he was very much a dwarven excellence, uh, dwarven exclusionary type of guy. So interesting that uh, that this the his supplier, like the immediate place we go right after that, is is Elven Run. <laughs> We're in the market for some healing potions yeah. to start with. Yes. Yeah. Of which uh, intensity are you? Level looking for? three for this one, please. <laughs> Two. Looking for a superior <laughs> healing potion. Yeah, yeah superior. Okay. <laughs> I've only got two of those currently. They're expensive, Grog. Well, yeah, but. We don't have pike, though. <laughs> I can sell you the two I'm superior healing people. potions. Yeah, those will run you 1,500 gold pieces. Fuck! Each. Really? Yeah. This is why. This is why you buy a medium healing On second healing thought, potion. I'll just read some more books yeah, I'll, tonight. I'll, I'll take damage. This is like shoving it in Refresh myself on my healing spells. Where are you going to go? Yes, you know. He gives you a keen look and says, "Tremaine." Tremaine. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is what she's good at. Everybody, take five. Let while we go. I'm just saying, we're heading into the mines. We are going to encounter very many arcane. Objects potentially. In fact, Lord Thunderbrand sent us over here. What's his name, right? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Sent us over here telling yeah. us to find his wares here. And we've made a deal with him that if we um, find arcane objects, we could potentially, um, you know, I lost track of what I was saying. But you get the idea. Dude, I, okay, not just because I love Travis. I, I kind of think he has the, the right take here. I, I'm not against chopping sessions. I'm not against haggling. But unless the store and the storekeeper have 
significant narrative, um, what's the word? Importance. We don't need to go through the whole song and dance of, of haggling them down. Like it, it's, it's not that important and deep if they're not going towards some manner of larger story. That's why a lot of times I really only have players shop during downtime, unless it's a very, um, uh, a, a very important or impactful shopping trip. Whereas this is just like, okay, they want to go stock up before a dungeon. You know, I'm a, I'm a menu type of DM of like, okay, this store has, has this stuff. Um, if they want anything specific, they can ask for it. Uh, but it, this, a lot of it happens out of character voice because of exactly what Travis just said. It's like, okay, everyone go take five while, while we haggle for, you know, fucking 20, 30 gold off in a game where gold really isn't that important. Like at the end of the day, unless you're running a mega gritty campaign, there are kind of always ways to make gold as a, as an adventurer. I I've rarely been in a situation where that last, that last few copper really came down to the line, you know? Oh. What would you suggest, uh, and do you know of any uh, things you should particularly buy before we leave, going into the mines and encountering oh, Nazi Naga-type creatures and other kind of dare things? Superior healing potions. Give us the time. How much are they each? 1,500 gold? 1,500 gold. I'll take one for me, thank you. We'll very well. We would very much like to perhaps make a deal with you that we'll bring you objects of arcane nature for a discount on your wares. <laughs> <laughs> make a persuasion. Oh, sh I just paid. Oh, no, you did it. Not yet. <laughs> oh, come on. Sister. No whammies, no whammies. Yeah, and then, then we have skill okay. checks, and then we have decisions, and all these branching uh, pads, elf. all for what is probably going to be like a hundred gold off. Hey, come on. And I appreciate this perhaps offer. Once you return from your minds uh. with these magical accoutrements, you are more than welcome to bring them here, and we'll make a deal. How However, many dragons have you come across, sir? Are you interested in dragon parts? Oh, we have a lot of dragon bits. He extends his hand to a shelf on the side labeled dragon parts. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what about, um... Lovely. And Let's to answer your question, uh, three. Oh, really? Okay. What about basilisks? What kind eggs? of dragons, actually? What was your question, sir? Uh, we have also, if you're interested in trade, <laughs> basilisk eggs. And parts of um, an umber hulk. And a troll dick. No, that's gone. <laughs> we flogged him with it and then it disappeared. I detract my offer. Yeah. <laughs> it was used very well. <laughs> he is so gives silly. you a very concerned look. Yeah, I'm a Both of you. Sorts. And he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I work in trade, yeah. meaning gold pieces oh. for my wares. Yes. If you have interest, purchase. If not, I have other business to attend to. Well, All right, any other healing potions to buy? Come on, people. Maybe a moderate. Mm. All right, well, friends, we're about to descend potions. into hell itself. Too moderate. So I reckon we should greater. probably pay the greater. price. Greater. In the new and just so. How much are the greaters? Ah. The greater healing potions run 300 gold a piece. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's get a few of those. I need like three. Uh -huh. So three? Yeah, three. Do you have any arrows that... Oh, uh, well, let's do the potion. Okay, 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 okay. Two for me. So five. Five. Two for me is one. Well. Seven. Seven. I'll take one. Eight. Travis is keeping arrows, track of all their five, gold, and he's like, wait, wait, wait. Let me... <laughs> Great. I, I, I need to do the math here. Nine. 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 Scanlon? Uh, well, do, do we have ours left over from what we had before? Yes. yes. Then I have, I'm fine. Okay. Vax? Uh, I'll take... Uh, no, I'm good, actually. Sorry. I've He's saved Vax. mine from... Uh, He's so up my I'm so six, fast, I don't up. really use them that much. So nine. Yeah. You'll get to that point as well. Nine potions, then? Nine, nine times potions. 300. Work that out. As he pulls up his arcane calculator. <laughs> so 2,500 for all, um, all nine of them. Abacus. Uh, I believe it's 2,700 gold pieces. Why would you do that? What? Mouth. It is 27. 
impressive for a Goliath. <coughs> I don't mean to assume, but in my experience is your kind. It's Professor Grog, actually. <laughs> All right. Uh, calm down. 2,700 gold pieces for your nine great healing potions. All right, 27. Do you have any arrows that perhaps have magical properties? Enchan enchanted arrows, Yes. she's asking for. You can advise over Ah, we haven't had much of a request for arrows in a while. We have bolts and crossbows, as mm -hmm. that seems to be the staple for the carvers of the city. I have two sleep arrows, perhaps, if that is of interest to you. Oh, two and what would you try yes, to Yes, it would be uh, very much. <coughs> yeah. I should build some interesting arrows. So I would call this, I'd say that there's like two general ways to handle shopping. It is either the waiter method or the tour guide method. Which is like, and they're doing more tour guide of like, you ask for what you want, I tell you if we have it, and I tell you how much it costs. And then there's also the menu option, and the menu option is just like, you give the players a list of what's there, and that's all that's there. And I think that the tour guide option can be good. And sometimes you just have to do it if you're not anticipating uh, them going to a particular store and you haven't prepared it ahead of time. But I would say if there's a store that you're like pretty sure the players are going to go to, I find in my experience that it really expedites shopping if you give them the menu because they don't have to go through the whole song and dance when it ultimately doesn't matter. And that's that's sort of what I'm getting from this is like, you know, again, Travis's take at the beginning of like, okay, guys, like take a five. We're going to be here a while when it really shouldn't. It's it's not important. It's bookkeeping. Let's get to the action. That would run you uh, 250 gold per hour. I have two currently. Available. All right, all right, I'll take them. Yes. All right, 500 gold. I that is a total of uh, 3,200 gold pieces. <laughs> what scale in underwater breathing or uh, air Dear oxygen sir, supplies? Uh, have you happened upon any relic or artifact maybe so around annoying. here or heard of something called uh, they love it. the Pale so Stone? You have to watch a side the um, rare artifact. I you can for see for that they're all kind of the drifting off. They're this not this really engaged, paying attention. They're all... <laughs> but should you come across no, one, I would be interested to have a look. Oh, 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 you appraise? If you don't. Very good. And, uh, oh, oh, do you have anything for... I'll even say... We're going to turn it down a little bit just so we can get through this. Because I don't think anything important is going to happen. I'll even say... Like, I am kind of of the opinion that when possible, you should even handle shopping off screen. I haven't done it before, so I can't I can't really speak to its efficacy, but especially if you're in a consistent location or like a few consistent locations where you have a couple of consistent shops to shop at, you should, I, I really feel like shopping should almost be handled just in between sessions. Just just let people have full access to the shops in between session and they can put in orders and, you know, we abstract when their characters actually go and get it. Because uh, I really think that all of that bookkeeping, it's almost like rations where it's like, yeah, I want the thing. And I think that it's an interesting challenge to not to like have gold and like have to decide like what to spend the gold on. Like that's all interesting, but it's not interesting in session. It's so much less interesting when everyone's around and you could be having story driven narrative experiences. You could be solving puzzles. You could be interacting with NPCs that matter to the story. And, and instead we're, we're bookkeeping. It's, it's just like let's let's handle it off screen if we can. In my opinion, I might try it for my next uh, for my next campaign. All right, I, well, thanks. All right, that's an important nut. He goes ahead and accepts your gold. Go ahead and mark off forty two hundred gold. I did already. Are, all right, very well. <laughs> Thank you for your patronage. I look forward to hopefully having you back when you return with whatever artifacts you manage to find. 
Thank you. You're Big, expensive nice. artifacts. Yes. You're one of the most charming people we've met so far. And it smells pretty mm. in here. But of course, they come in rare ornaments <gasps> in the city, it seems. Mm. You hear under his breath a little bit of a mutter. Apparently, it's like elves don't like dwarves. It's weird. it's weird. Do we sleep before we get to go kill shit? Yeah. We're gonna go can sleep. We go do that. Let's go sleep and then get up in the morning and go down and kill things. And I'd love to do a crafting roll right mm -hmm. before I go to sleep just to put together. And this is something that's interesting. I'm I'm really curious to see. Mark this down. I'm gonna bet he doesn't do it. And this is something that I feel like I've heard Matt Mercer talk about. Um uh, about something that he got better at, but about introducing clocks, introducing time uh, frames to your players. It should not feel like Skyrim where you can go and do the main quest whenever the hell you feel like it. You know, you can do the main quest immediately or you can do the main quest three years <laughs> from now while you're doing all the different side quests and all, everything else. In D&D, it should feel like if you ignore something for even a day, the situation changes. If you put off one day, it should be different. Like, you shouldn't be able to just infinitely uh, retain your resources, especially in D&D. D&D, at its core, is designed for the crawl. It's designed for you to slowly expend your resources as time progresses. Uh, and if you're not doing that, if you're allowing players to sleep whenever they want, long rest in dungeons, what have you, uh, you are kind of inherently unbalancing the game. Like, that's just not how D&D was designed to go. So this idea of like, okay, you know, we had this battle now we'll, and, and we're aware of a danger, now we'll long rest. If they don't take actions and sometimes you can't take actions sometimes it is the most reasonable thing to long rest but there should still be a threat you know you come down and maybe one of the guards outside talks about rumbling that they heard or like additional things happening overnight that indicate to the players like oh yeah like if we take too long if we long rest after every battle the situation is going to deteriorate there's going to be additional risk factors if we take our time too much. Another little thing. What would I put together? I'd like to try and build a bolo arrow, a trapping arrow. Yeah! Interesting, okay. Uh, as you guys head back to the inn where you rent rooms for the week, uh, which would be at the Iron Hearth Tavern. Well, yes. is Volsack in there when we uh, walk in? Bogus is Bogus. not within the tavern, no. He's not? He's no, Bogus. Bogus. Sorry. Oh, poor Bogus. Really? Not in there. Sorry. He's got a home. Yeah, but doesn't mean you have to go to it. True. I walk Trinket down into the storage area that he oh, can oh, stay. Oh, Trinket goes down begrudgingly. Damn it. I look around for something that can look like a pillow for him. And you find a couple of sacks of grain Just that could probably work. I put them down work. and make them comfy for him. <laughs> okay, you make it a little nice bed. Make it nice. Closet, but you don't care. It's not your grain. That's fine. <laughs> Also, I feed him. Okay. Trinket is very happy. <laughs> Tears into some meat. Um, you guys make it back to the tavern for an evening's rest. Uh, for you... Not a super complicated thing, but, you know, I've got to... Yeah. Gotta... Go ahead and make a Tinker's Kit roll. Uh, what, is, what am I rolling with my Tinker's Kit? I've never done this before. Okay. Uh, for this, I'll go ahead and make it an intellect modifier to your Tinker's Kit. Intellect like modifier? Stone shape? Cool. Shit, cool. And I'm spending my, my bonus Should die I as well. Know. Oh, okay. we have a bonus die, don't we, from, from Scanlan um, still? Thank God, because I rolled really badly. Ten, uh, ten. Ten? You spend and toil away for the next four or so hours trying to find a way to get this trigger to work. Uh, twice, you nearly sprain a finger. You manage to seemingly get it to function, then the arrow itself splits and shatters. You can see there being something to it, but this is not going to come to you. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Damn, sorry. It's on the, it's on the list. That sure. was a terrible roll. It was a terrible roll. It's been a bad day. For it's rolling. been a bad yeah. day for rolling. Fresh yeah. start in the well, morning. Well, tomorrow is the yeah. day that it counts because yeah. that's getting it all cracks when we could die. My system, new dice, like a new dice. To be fair, it's been a long day. Yeah, yeah, I'm still bleeding. Should we rest and get on with it, let's or should we visit some whorehouses? No, or? Let's, let's, let's sleep. just sleep let's tonight. Let's sleep up. Really? Oh, I think they're still tired. Oh yes. Oh, sorry, one of them battered, battered me quite. Them and their whore oh, ass. Yeah, That's me getting beaten up by a whore. Don't you get in the elbow drop. No, no, you're right. She was giving you the Randy Savage from the bedpost. This is really 
Oh, yes. yeah. We're sleeping now. All right. So you guys go to sleep. You wake up the next morning. Fully healed. Spells restored. Well rested. I'm ready for the day. You think it's day. It's hard to tell. Still, this underground circumstance is really messing with you guys. Well, should we go uh, plunder some mines and kill yeah, some kill goblins? Let's, Let's go plunder some mines. Shall we head down to the mine? All right. Yeah. To, the ho- to the hole. <laughs> Take right. your day to the hole. You make your way down to the hole, Uh-oh. down to the bottom ring of Craghammer, which was the mines proper. The miners have gone back to work, and from what you can see, uh, there's just an all-around crazy business with people cleaning out, still trying to clean out the ichor that's on the ground left over from the. And the bottom ring was supposed before. to be like very hostile, uh, but make it's way to the front of the mines, and fun. immediately three of the carvers that are standing at the front approach as you begin to walk, and then upon noticing you, we'll kind of like. Step back and put their weapons to the side, yeah. acknowledging the orders that they received from uh, Lord Grace Bynum. Oh, Trinket's with us. Trinket has Trinket come along. All right, all right, they addressed Trinket Trinket. it. Right. I, I assume Trinket comes with you unless you say otherwise. Yes. In general. Okay. Are they especially like bowing to Scanlan the Snake Slayer? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Busy working. No. And. Fair play to the gnome, but the dwarves. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. They see the crap all the time. You make your way into the mine proper. It goes back for a good 10 minutes of walking, kind of winding. You can see the actual track of the mine track leading around. You come upon a couple of dwarves that kind of look over their shoulders because you guys as you pass them. Uh, go right back into mining whatever remains in the inside of this. It looks like this portion of the mine has been nearly picked clean. The dwarves that are in there are probably just wasting time to get their pay for the day. <laughs> um, you go further back and eventually Hell it opens yeah. up. Uh, if you have we a love that. Available. Put it over there. Waste cool. the man's uh, eventually time. It opens put it so that the people can see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that a uh, thing? We, they can't see that. Put it on we the We can put it on the thing. There, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Come on, take care. Um, yeah. The most probably yeah. subscribing yeah. as you go, so it's not okay. too important. Right. So, it's like Italy. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like Italy. It's a boot. It's the boot, yeah. Following it, you get to a portion of the mine that is very busy. You can see, since this is probably one of the portions that wasn't collapsed in previous incursions by the whatever creatures these were, uh, you get the feeling that this one has basically taken most of their workforce to continue to try and find and carve a new vein uh, or find a new path to pull things from. You get towards the portion uh, where where all these dwarves are working, you notice some of the doors have been shattered, knocked off the hinges. You imagine whatever creatures were barreling through before, mm. this is probably where they came through. Right. Good narration. Okay, so I talked about this in the first episode, and I'm really, I, again, I'm waiting for it, and I think that the biggest piece of, like, the, the first piece of new DM advice that I always give out when it comes to how to describe things is talking about what you see is great. It can be descriptive. It can be very good for the narrative. I, it, it's, it's essential for the narrative a lot of the time. However... It essentially makes a map for the players. Like, it it helps them visualize what's going on, but it doesn't give them a good feel for it. And I find that the piece of advice that was given to me and the piece of advice that I give to all my players and any new DMs that ask is if you're trying to create a feeling, and creating a feeling is really good. You want your players to feel like they're in it. You want them to invest And in order to create a feeling, you need to talk about what you hear and what you smell, as well as what you see. So you need to talk about the crunching of the gravel, the grunts of the dwarves, the the sweat, the sweaty, almost mildewy smell of all of these (laughs) dwarves that are likely hung over and it's mixing with the dust and the gravel and the grime of the mines, creating this this almost sickeningly stale stench in the air. That sort of thing is what gives the players the feeling of being in the scene. It drives role play. It drives character investment. Just talking about what they see makes a map. It gives the players options. But talking about what you smell and what you hear gives the characters their feeling. That's how I would put it. You guys. So we're Make going. an arcane check. Somebody with an arcane. <clears throat> okay. Oh, yeah. Can I look around? Perception. 
You look around. What are you looking for? I'm looking for, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna specific. Uh, Fifteen arcana Scratch check. marks for anything. I like the idea Kills. of magic. I just want to see if 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 there's anything familiar about about the markings. Anything like if I can identify. It's just stuff getting ripped off the any wall. Any signs right? of something uh, of something mystical that's come through yeah, here? Like a portal or a. Um, or a that'd be more of an investigation. Oh role. well, all right. I'm gonna look for tracks. Okay, mm. I'd be investigation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ins- I'm gonna assist her. I'm look for animal tracks. I don't know which one to roll. Both de- my die have been rolling I'm so bad. I'm going to detect the one. For a while. All right. <laughs> and and looking at the mine. Right, this one is no longer in service. Oh, wow! Wow! <laughs> Put Bye. it in dice jail. Well, hers is a lot better. <laughs> Good. Something I hear a lot about with Matt that he is really good at, that I think is a general life skill, I don't think it's just a D&D skill, is he is very comfortable sitting in silence, waiting for his uh, players to respond, to come up with things to do. Uh, and he, when he doesn't need to, he very calmly and patiently just sits there and waits and just waits for them to interact with him. And I think that is, I I've seen that attributed to why critical role feels so different from a lot of other actual plays is because Matt is so willing to step back and let the players shine. Um, but I think in general, I was actually uh, just talking about this earlier today that I think being able to sit in silence with someone can be a really powerful life skill. Uh, when it comes to uh, it, when it comes to the professional environment, interpersonal environments, I think that just being able to sit in a comfortable silence can be a powerful, like aggressive move in a negotiation. It can be incredibly good for uh, for interpersonal dialogue to not have to inject your thoughts constantly uh, and let the other person direct the conversation if it's very emotional for them. Uh, so this is something I would think about as a player and as a DM is how often are you injecting in places you don't need to inject? Something I have to think about a lot. Obviously, I'm a content creator. I'm streaming. Uh, I have a problem keeping my thoughts to myself. Uh, <laughs> so it's something I have to very actively work on, which is why it's so top of mind for me. <laughs> Sorry, I've got the map, so I'm looking at the mine. Are we still in the dwarven carved out sort of um, structure portion of the mine? You are. You, 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 have, you have just essentially started on that map. All right, oh. well, so let's go well, down. Guys, I'm holding a map. Um, I see one room that uh, they've scrolled um, supply on, so it should be the next right up ahead. I'd like to just take a peek in there and see what we can see before we head deeper in. All right, you are. I rolled one again. A natural one. A natural one. Vax and I get dressed up in Sherlock Holmes cosplay. <laughs> oh my god. And we say, golly gee, I think I see some animal tracks over here. <laughs> they are staring at their the own going cold. on the ground. <laughs> yes, yes. Following oh, the man. ground in a circle. This has turned completely back from <laughs> yeah. the first game. I know. You guys are failing consistently. Everything. Let's turn this around. Let's turn this around. Yeah. Anyhow, right, so. I've got some maps. So let's yes. use let's this. Use the map. <laughs> Stay on point. Right. You make your way uh, towards the supply room as you kind of head to where it was the uh, Let's do it. one of the dwarves is guarding it not a carver just one of the miners that's that is hired fun. for this purpose uh, is standing there uh, it leads you into the f- door kind of opening it for you awkwardly going alright whatever you're looking for fine go inside uh, looking inside there are just racks and racks and racks of pickaxes shovels uh, utensils for the purpose of mining and constructing there are wooden boards lined up there are just giant barrels of nails and, and clipping utensils and things that are used in the continuous expansion of a mine. I've like seen enough. Nails. We should keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, this map says that there's an, uh, an elevator, uh, a that short ways down. up, that goes down, but then the oh, I wish I could railway see that, that goes further in into the cave, so I'm not sure. Let's we, let's take we should probably go down. Yeah, yeah I feel like going down. down. Yeah, yeah, let's go furthest you feel all like the way what? down. You feel like How many uh, of us so can the elevator it. hold? Stop it. I right. think so. The elevator can pretty much hold all of you guys. Okay, let's go. Let's I think it's just it. a safe assumption that Lady Kima did not just walk to the back of the upper floors. She probably went down. Yeah, let's go down. Come yeah. on. Shit done. Let's go. All right. Let's get low. I was actually so yeah. Lead yeah. Everyone <laughs> Taking charge, pushing the pace. Right. Right. Love it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> love it. As you guys are walking over to where the elevator is, you do notice there are two places in the mines where there is just large piles of rubble and part of the ceiling has collapsed. You can see that there were 
portions where the mine expanded much deeper into the mountain that were detonated or collapsed in the idea of preventing any further incursion by hmm. whatever these creatures are pouring through. Hmm. Um, hmm. Okay. You also can see that there are some dwarven corpses being loaded out from the mine below, as well as goblin corpses. Individuals that were caught in the attack that happened yesterday before managed to emerge from the mine. Um, Scan them, are you all right around these goblin corpses? Are you all right? Uh, any any good any goblin corpse is a good goblin, I say. I'm fine with it. Okay. I'll just quickly spit on yeah, their bodies as they go by. Them. And you do nice. so quite quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's rapid. It's amazing. So we follow the corpses and see where they're coming yeah. from? All right. Uh, so that heads away from the uh, elevator. No, no, no. No, no, no. They're being taken to be buried. Let's just No, no, no. Where they're coming from. Oh. Right. They, they were okay. Uh, so, 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 so we could either go to the rear of the, the mine on this level and see where they're coming from. I thought we already went from. downstairs. No, not yet. They're coming from. Uh, there's a spiral staircase in the map, on on the lower right hand side. Yes. Hey. Uh, that's where they're coming from. Does right. that lead down? Probably. It seems to. Well mm. then, let's take go down. Instead of whatever. Let's go down. All right. You should put it under. I will say, when you're doing a dungeon crawl like this, and uh, the position of things really matters, it's it's very very important. Uh, I don't bother taking you know every single player mini, uh, and you know tracking out and asking what their marching order is. Like I, I don't think you need to do all of that. If you want to, that's fine. Um, but I do think that it's important like especially right now when they're exploring something there's mystery there's fog of war uh to know where the party generally is uh even on a small paper map like that you find something to represent the party maybe a penny if you're on roll 20 even just one of the character icons can be used to represent the party and move that around as you're describing things. Uh, they might tell you like, oh no, I don't move there, whatever. Maybe there's a larger conversation there, but you don't run into confusion as often uh, and having to repeat things and then having to explain them. And so I think that having just that small marker for people's mental uh, can can kind of keep things clear. All right. We're, we're good with that. You guys go ahead and approach the elevator. It's a large wooden platform with a series of chains. My Wee. Really terrible, hastily drawn yeah, map there for you. Right. It's kind of crap, but it's kind of great. I'm it was it, it was actually more designed as a DM utensil, but uh. oh, look at that! Okay, so we can finally we we can see the map now. I think that crude maps number one. He's he's like, oh no, my map is so bad. Crude maps are great, especially when you're giving them to players. Exact maps are lame, if you ask me. I I have a I have a short about that that did really really well. I I fully encourage uh world like dms not to give their players world maps ever uh and to in in ma the majority of the time uh have the players draw their own world maps and like give their own estimates and ideas of how far apart things are and what direction they are uh if you're doing a lot of traveling i think that that adds a lot of really fun options uh for communication mishandling uh for getting lost i mean adds a lot of real you know uh, problems that feel real problems that you know are kind of wiped away by the video game world map um and even with dungeon maps if it's something that they got from an npc outside having it be rough and not exact measurements can be amazing Especially as a DM, you can say, hey, you know, you're you're kind of holding your map up. You're looking at this, and this isn't, this doesn't look right compared to your map. It adds a layer of intrigue, a layer of mystery. So, uh, Matt, do not, do not apologize for your crappy map. I think crappy map is good map. <laughs> uh, you guys needed a map, so I, I gave you my map. There you go. Um, take it back. Stop, take it back. <laughs> no, give it to me. It's a mine. No, I'm keeping it. Uh, no, I'm it's all right. keeping it. So you get back to the elevator. There's a large uh, 15 by 20 foot wooden platform with a series of chains. And uh, there are two dwarves in the back that run a giant iron wheel. As you approach, they kind of give you a look at well, are you serious about going down? Yeah. 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 Okay, step on the platform. Let's the two, do it. two dwarves grab and begin to 
rotate the giant wheel. So this is like the real does, you can win the chain dungeon. beginning to tighten. The other was the like platform the platform shutters for a second against the lower. As it begins to lower, you can feel the actual platform kind of shake a little bit. Which does unfortunately kind of take away to what I was talking about with the verticality. I was hoping that the entire mine was going to be the dungeon and that the elevator was going to be like an interesting choke point between the two. But uh, this is also fine. As the Guys, whole weight is placed in the chain. We're on an elevator. <laughs> I love elevators. As the winch begins to release and stuff, I've you guys... I've never been in one of these before. Trinket is a little nervous. Yeah, it's really um, tight. It's really... It's really... an elevator with a bear. It's really dark. Yeah, tight. Oh, light! That one's oh, light. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Suddenly... Keyleth's getting a little claustrophobic. Shook, She's shook. never been in this tight of a space. Are you claustrophobic? As the light spell... Um, baby? Oh, no, no. ...bursts out from his ah. staff, you all kind of have to yeah. cover your eyes for a second. Mm. Um, <laughs> but the lower area is opened up. A word uh, of warning Can Tiberius. we see, like, out? She said it was dark, and I, and I cast my spell. Yeah, that's what you do. Boom. <laughs> you guys hit the bottom floor. Um, you step off the platform, and you can see there is a secondary mine cart that leads from this elevator that curves to the left and leads deeper into the mine proper. Okay. Uh, to the right of you is the spiral staircase, and you can see now two of the other minor dwarves are dragging a dead body across. Can I look uh, for gob goblin tracks down here and follow those? <laughs> you can attempt another investigation. <laughs> Why don't we just uh, again, ask the, the yeah. more, more sensory checks. It's exactly what we talked about earlier. It's like, oh, I couldn't find them up there. Can I try here? Uh, yeah, I think she can. Okay. I, mean, I don't think it's the guards. It's, it's a hard thing to deal with. So don't curse me. <laughs> There's Please don't do that. What is it that I'm bad at to? Perception? Investigate. You have advantage on the roll because you're a ranger tracking. Okay. Why don't we just ask? Is that real? Well, that's good. Okay, let's go with a 17. 17. God, All right. Get to that this week. So as you guys are going Man, to I ask need to somebody about this, <laughs> your ranger gets down and begins inspecting the floor. <laughs> yeah, um, I where see you, things. Where you can see there are struggles that apparently occurred. You can see slash marks on the ground. You can mm. see bodies uh, or the impacts of bodies and where some of these dwarves have been pulled away. Um, a few minutes later, you can see tracks, yes, yes, rattle. dwarven tracks. Uh, of bodies being pulled and dragged, not in the direction they're going, but further Damn. down the tunnel. Yeah, let's go there. Oh no. As you look and follow that track, you notice that maybe a good 200 feet to the left of the cavern, there is a new tunnel breach that is currently open, about a 20 by 15 size it wasn't on the map. tunnel that is fresh and blasted out from the other side. You can Ooh. see rubble and rocks strewn across the floor. Yeah, it's Coming a fucking the... trip, right? Let's go down there. <laughs> Let's go down where it's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can we see? Can we I'm bored. Let's go fight now? things. Oh is it black yeah. or is it dim? My uh, <laughs> with his light spell, it's fairly bright. Nice. <laughs> Otherwise, it's fairly dim. Most, well, most I'll of the cut my hands over my face and go. Grog, grog, grog. <laughs> and it does echo. Grog, grog, grog. Why would you do that? Why not? <laughs> Following the tracks, you can see the. Oh, I still love. I still love grog, but this is sort of approaching the der her dumb that I was talking about earlier of doing just like clearly harmful things for your party. Uh, and being like, why not? I don't understand the the dangerous situation we're in. Like, <laughs> I think that Grog would know not to, unless he's just not concerned about the about the strength of the enemies, which you know could be valid, could actually be his his uh, more feelings. But uh, yeah, I don't know that that's more along the lines of. Um, that reminds me of like lawful stupid paladins, like <laughs> just doing like dumb shit, you know? The, the dragging of the bodies does indeed go in the direction and into the newly but I still love tracks right. in this mind network. Um, what you do notice is the dwarves' bodies that are being dragged away, you can see the footprints of those that are also pulling them aside. You kind of figure out the idea of like the pattern of the foots that are, the footsteps that are leading in that direction. Um, most of them are also dwarven Big in snack. shape. Oh, okay. Most of them. So there are, you can gather dwarven feet dragging dwarven bodies Duogar. deeper inside. Dwarven However, there are two bodies that are being dragged with no footprints whatsoever. What? Oh. Wait. Used like skateboards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> Legolas style. <laughs> Who and what are those? <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, Is That's there fine. any residue? Wow. Yeah. If only we had asked is there some any of the dwarves residue? what had been going on down here. Blood? <laughs> nah. We already know. Green, yeah. red, uh, black. From the, the dragging marks, there is no blood. There's no signs of them dragging dead bodies off, at least. Does it look like they struggled? Uh, no, there's no struggle either. Oh, crap. Fire. Uh, what about the walls? How close are the walls? The walls here for this tunnel are about 15, 20 feet in width and about 10, 15 feet high. Are there any scratch marks or anything like that on the walls? No. Let's stop mm, no, digging no around and go into yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a, this is a very interesting... Uh, I, I'm sure that some people have heard of, like, you know, the different types of players, whatever. There's... um or the different types of characters within stories. Uh, something that people talk about a lot is like the face. Uh, so that's like kind of the charismatic one, the one that interacts with, uh, with NPCs. It's normally a bard or a sorcerer, maybe a warlock, um, maybe the paladin. Uh, but there is a character that I, I do feel like is important to have in basically every composition, which is the leader. It is kind of important, I think, within a D&D &D party to have someone that is there to make decisions, to make calls, and the rest of the party falls in line, and if they don't, there's conflict, there's drama. Um, I, I, and I think that from what I've seen so far, Vax is, is fulfilling a good leader role of like hey like you know th this is, what we're doing right now is not important we need to go on uh he's like ultimately making a lot of the decisions and pushing the party forward i think that's good from a narrative perspective and also just from like a practical player exp like perspective i think that a lot of players will detail dive themselves into not having fun like they will ask for so much information and then all of a sudden realize that they're bored and not understand why. Uh, so it's good to have someone that is there that maybe does care about details, but is still there to push the pace. Um, and, and, you know, a pace pusher can, can be a lot of different things. It can be people that just like take action without thinking and without leading. Um, but it's also good to have someone that the rest of the party defers to. And says, like, okay, you know, they're saying it, we're gonna go. Uh, and unless there is like a real reason to disagree with them, uh, they just they just go along with it and the decision's made. Alright. We go further. You push further in. Uh so this tunnel pitch black. There is no light source aside from the one that you're creating. You guys push forward and push forward, following the tracks, and push forward. And the tunnel winds and winds and descends and winds oh, no. and descends. Yes, separate them. About two hours Whoa, of following boy. this tunnel with little variation. Should have grabbed some dried fruit. We got a ton. Steadily. Okay, this is a this is a question for chat. This is a question for chat. This is something that I've run into, every DM I know has run into, and this is a perfect example when the party makes a decision and then the next interest point is very far away. So in this case, it's like, oh, we need to travel through this hole for two hours to get to the next interest point. It's so obviously the DM can't narrate that whole two hours. Where do you check in with players? Because I've had it before where I say, you know, after two hours of walking, you ex you know you get to blah blah blah, and my players are like, oh, I would have never walked for two hours, like like there's there's no way I would have done that. I would have turned back after ten minutes, uh, and, and gone and done this other thing. And so now they feel cheated out of agency. They feel like they didn't really get to make a good informed decision, and that their characters are now being essentially puppeted by the by the DM. So. My question to chat is, how long do you wait? Like, do you say, like, after 15 minutes? Do you say it after 10 minutes? Do you say it at the next interest point like this of, like, two hours later? This is the next interesting thing that happens. Uh, 
I, I think that that's, that's a really interesting question to consider because I'll say it. I think that this style of just like two hours later on this thing that like maybe you did or didn't want to do, I think it's kind of bad. I think it takes away a lot of agency. But then the question is, okay, how often do I check in with him? Do I check in every 30 minutes? F three instances of you see nothing is really boring. <laughs> so, you know, if I say like 30 minutes later, you see nothing. 30 minutes later, you see nothing. Like you just keep going. That's boring. That breaks the pace and that breaks the feel. So is it an hour? An hour is pushing it a little bit. Um, I don't know. That's a question I want to put out there to the to the other DMs. Uh, feel free to to let me know in the chat. Declining and winding as it progresses. Three hours go by. This tunnel goes extremely deep. Whatever managed to dig its way up here came from pretty far and under this dragging, line. And at no point does it look like the body's ever moved. Nope. No change in physicality, no sign of struggle. And there are drag marks all the way. Yeah. Yeah. And two hours ago, I started stealthing and taking the lead. We're all right. Dark, right? We'll still check. I thought I was tracking. And see, now there's a bit of retconning of like, okay, two hours ago, I did this, I did that. Uh, 29. You have to be open to that Ooh, as a DM. Yeah, you're right. Hey, first Here we go. Oh, all right, right, there we go. Change Let's change now. Touch him. You feel <laughs> pretty <laughs> stealthy. <laughs> you guys look like, I feel wait, stealthy. Hell look at all the facts yeah. Um <laughs> Oh, shit, I hope you didn't hear me just say that about him. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, brother. I think it's serious. Um, Tom Island. I found him. Fine. Looks fine. All right. About Do four hours. Wait. Yeah. Are there any, like, drafts? Do you feel any wind flows or anything no. like that? Oh. Mm. It is still in stagnant air. <laughs> Even more stagnant now. <laughs> um, four hours of traveling oh. deeper into this oh. tunnel's path until... Anybody else have to go he to the rolled, bathroom? He rolled oh. something. Oh, no, he rolled. And so that is how I spent my 12th birthday. Great story. Thank you. And, yeah. um, let's see, what I else? Scared, you kill me, I'll kill you. There's a great little cave uh, um, Same dog. alcove here. Perfect for, oh, for peeing in. See you. For everyone yes. to fit. Oh. Am I over here? <laughs> or am I over here? Uh, perhaps we could... Um, Take a pee break here yeah. and proceed yeah. further into the mines. I agree with that. That's a good idea. You catch my <laughs> As yeah. the four hour mark of travel into this oh, tunnel man. presents itself, the tunnel finally widens and opens. Pee break for you. No pee break. As the sound of distant water rushing reaches oh, your ears. No. Okay. <laughs> As Tiberius steps <laughs> into water this rushing? opening, so the mines the were an intro to the real dungeon. Into this new cavern, a large, beautiful open space presents itself, a good hundred foot up ceiling. Uh, from what you can see, a roaring river is now pouring out of the nearby rock, cascading over a cliffside into a waterfall down into oh, this man. deeper, giant cavernous space. What about the tracks? The tracks continue in the direction of that river. Into the river? Like that's... It goes into the water. Do we want to step into the room fully? The yes. what? Uh, why don't we? I'm gonna stealth. Send yeah. I'm a stealth too. Detail stealth. Kiddo. Stealth twins. Do I detect any magic? Stealth twins, 2015. <laughs> you detect no magic. Lots of things happening. Um, at being asked to Matt right now. We'll take a bio break. Okay. Bio break. As the mystery begins to unfold. <laughs> <laughs> I love a mystery. Be back here in about five, ten minutes, folks. So. <laughs> Keep it near us. Five, ten minutes. Quick, quick. Let's head forward. Head forward. Head forward. Head forward. Head forward. Head forward. Right shots, everybody. Oh, there is. Everyone runs off too. That's why it's the waiting. Plan. We've all had. I will say, uh, I do. I like what what Matt did. I think it's good storytelling to give the players something to mull over while they take the break. I think it uh, helps the players not break out of the immersive experience because if you ended it just at like you've been walking for three hours and then something happens whoa um and then and then you immediately break i you know they, they're they gonna be kind of thinking about something else because the last thing that happened was kind of boring whereas if you give them this interesting narration big cavern roaring river 
uh, it gives them a little bit of something to think about in terms of what their character are, what their character is going to do, uh, as well as what might be going on here. Also, he is adorable and gives expert massages. Welcome back. Thank you for waiting. We've You're all welcome. had our fill of snacks, drinks, and uh, relieving ourselves the ones we had earlier. So, uh, before we return, we actually want to thank you guys for having all the subscriptions you have since we started playing. We made a thousand very quickly. You guys are awesome. Yeah. So, thank you for that. Yeah. Round of applause. Round of applause. The subscriptions have been awesome. Let's go. And as such, we have a winner for this evening's event. Hi, Tiberius. Oh, Tiberius has returned. <laughs> so, <laughs> in character, as always. Um, <laughs> So the winner of the evening is going to win both a signed photo of the cast of Critical Role, as well as a signed player's handbook of D&D's 5th edition, is... <clears throat> Visitor. <laughs> <laughs> no, on the back side. The winner is... Nyareth. Congratulations, thank you for subscribing. What if it was me? Attention, being in the chat room, being what awesome. if I've been gaslighting you all for several hours, sure like that thinking that I've awesome never watched it and I'm actually giveaway. like an old head So awesome, yeah. well done, Yareth. Yes. Thank you for coming. Yes. And I forgot yes. that, that Matt yes. outed me right there. That's not uh, the game, right. not. I've never yes. seen yes. it. Yes. But, <laughs> uh, that'd be funny. <laughs> Hopefully more to come down the road, we'll have more. I've been watching too much Ludwig where he tricks his chat. So, bringing it back to the game at hand. As you've stepped into this large cavernous space, you can hear the rush of water as the underground river being turned into a waterfall and drift into a smaller body of water. It's just out of sight beyond this cliff face into this open cavernous area. Um, oh, we just stealthed. You guys also stealthed. What did you roll for stealth? I rolled 17. 17, got it. All Ooh, right. Less than that. Mm. Oh, no, I didn't. 18. All right. You are already stopping. That's true. Um, <laughs> as you guys kind of step into the space, uh, and there there are sections of you know, large rock, uh, portions of stone that just jut out and kind of block off portions from your view of this area. Giant stalagmites and stalactites that just but permeate the entirety of this cavern, which has been long just oh, building and building with uh, elements drawn from the ceiling from the water as it flows through. You also faintly see a light source behind one of those rock pillars in the distance. Should we go into the light? Do we perceive mm. anything in here with us before going that far? Make perception in? Yes. Uh, 18. 18? Yes. You, you hear a very, very faint sound in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> That's not the sound. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I have a passive perception of 21. Yes, you do. Um, Damn. Asshole. Big you perception. Hear a... Does she have expertise? Probably. Oh, oh, oh skittering. Shh. I might hear spiders. Oh. Spider. Oh. Or something. Oh. Making it old school. Maybe it's very faint <laughs> maraca <laughs> dance of some sort. What direction oh. is it coming from? That would be better. It's hard to tell at this point. It seems to be just kind of loosely atmospheric. Is the light coming from over the water? Hey, uh, the very, very faint know? light you see, no. It's, oh. it's, it's adjacent to the water to the right of you. Okay. I think we're dealing with spiders. Oh. I think you guys should hang back and we should stealth forward <clears throat> and yes. see how many it looks like we're yeah. <laughs> dealing with. The twins okay. will creep forward. Okay. Go ahead. You both creep process. forward. I'm going to make our eyes. Good spider noises. I'm spell the light that. Yeah. spell? Yeah. Just tip the light. Light? Pitch darkness yeah. falls upon oh. all of you. Why did you no, do that you for? Do because it's now they don't know where we are. Well, we can't They're see spiders. Anything. Or crabs. We can't or see um, spiders. I'm going to go ahead yeah. wait, while he does. They're both half elves. Can they? Do they not have. Am I Am I high right now? Do, dark, do half elves not have dark vision? I was nearly sure. I know Kaleth has it. Goliath definitely doesn't. Dragonborn doesn't. Gnome. Doesn't it looks like four out of the seven of them do not, and I think three all the all the ones with elf blood I think should have dark vision, and it's the two that are stealthing, so i I don't uh foresee it as that i i i think is is uh this is correct. 
as a, I'm going to go ahead and turn into a cave bear. Can you not see him? Not okay. In, we can so see a dim light, but, oh, but that means that we can sort of... Dark vision. No, sure. dim light only. Okay. Oh. Do they? <laughs> I mean, what you turn into? It doesn't matter. Do you want me to turn that on? Bear. Yeah, the subterranean bears. They have dark Vex, Vex. What about a All right. So, did you? you go ahead and roll a perception check. Yes. Yeah, but turn it, turn no. it back on. No, leave it off. Leave it off. <laughs> All right, I just spent it again. Fuck. I'm sorry. Fuck. Oh my god. Like, wow. Like, 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 like. How did you do <laughs> That's that? It's a fucking it's rave in there. Night. How? Oh no. Twelve. Clap on. Twelve. Clap off. As you glance about in cave bear form, you look up. And all you can make out is shifting movement across the ceiling. Oh, oh God. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, but it's yeah. ceiling. Large. It's not a small creature. Oh, dear. One. You glance multiple. off to your left and you look up and you see a second one. Uh, oh, giant spider. And both classic. dislodge. Oh, no. All of you hear two loud, cacophonous, thunderous slam sounds. Definitely hit like on the ground next I to you. Quickly with a, whisper to my sister to, to the boundaries. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. Uh, Mix and backs dance backwards against the wall. There is a surprise <laughs> round. Oh no! Oh, oh god! Oh. But I heard them. I know. No! 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 All right. Here's the thing. So you guys oh, are stealth okay. off to the side there. Oh, that's that's beautiful. I'm on the other side. Look at that fun map. There's Trinket. Thank you, Matt, for doing all the work on these maps and shit. That's what I do. <laughs> so there's the water. They're oh, rushing off into the waterfall that goes further tricks. down. Ooh, that's a pretty map. The waterfall is where on that map? I like that. Uh, the waterfall is right here. I've talked about how I'm a, over, I'm a gridless Falls into Gary. the water below. I like these there, non uh, are maps. some of these large rock uh, elements you know, here. kind of leave something You cannot the tell what's beyond this area, which is where the light source is coming from. Uh... Those no. stairs? Oh, oh no! Oh. Those are like under holes. Yeah. They are. No! Oh, no. You've had one brief run in with a single umber hulk in the past. No, we have two. As two slam into the ground Ooh. beside you, dropping from the ceiling portion. Fudge! I have their claws still. Wait, do you guys remember? Do they respond to I my mean, vibration? I, mean, I cast stone skin on myself immediately. You don't have that much time, unfortunately, because oh. they're upon you with a surprise round. Mm -hmm. Shit. Uh, Do they respond to vibration? Not a surprise round. It's, they respond to the they something. are surprised. They, they respond common. to the something. Misconception, right. especially for people that played you know, previous so, editions. Like this one shifts up oh, shit. over there, oh. and this one moves up to Jesus. there. It gleans past you as it does not Good notice job, you. Um, this one. Comes towards you, Percy. Damn it. Attacking you with each of its claws and its mandibles. No, the first strike comes at you with a 13 to hit with its first claw. What's your AC? Uh, 17. You whoosh, just managed to dodge out of the way. Uh, these giant bladed. All right, Justin. We're going to see if, you're, uh, <laughs> if your comments earlier bear out. Are they going to get slapped or are they going to do the slapping? Or is it, uh, or is it going to be close? We'll see. Claws sweep past ah. your face. The second strike comes with you at a 21. Oh, shit. Um, that, hits. that hits. I'm going to uh, use a gunslinger's, gunslinger's dodge. Gunslinger's uh, dodge. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, it's not enough. Never mind. So, no, I'm just going to take it. All right. So, the uh, the claw finds purchase across your torso. Oh, <laughs> the armor catches most of it. However, the, uh, the slash does leave an impact on you as you can feel the taste of iron in the back of your throat. Uh, you suffer nine points of slashing damage. Oh, okay. Oh. And just as you pull back the mandibles, tend to crunch down upon you, and that is going to be a 27 to hit. Oh, no! Uh, you take 14 points of slashing damage as the mandibles slice oh. down. Okay, that makes your more shoulder. sense. You I was like, nine? Them, so Must you wrench the shit. pointed portions of the mandibles across the like shoulder. Most of the umber hole cat attacks, attacks probably have like pattern. plus five to their damage. Um, Ow. That brings us to the other one who is attacking uh, Grog. Grog. Right there in front of it. The biggest oh. and most viable visual can find. No, uh, motherfucker, miss. I start singing using my cutting words <laughs> reaction. All right. <laughs> to try to distract him. All right. So no, motherfucker, miss. To, uh, no, mother attack roll. Uh, D8. D8. Love it. Three. All right. Uh, that would have been a. That would have been a 20 to hit. 
That brings it to a 17. Oh. 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 <laughs> so that as feels the best out, as, a as it pulls back oh, with, with, with its, is what it with its mandibles works. to strike at Grog. It <laughs> looks off oh, you no. for a second, goes back at which point Grog has put its axe up to its face and is holding it at bay. As its mandibles are tied in with its blades, as the handle of the axe is trying to hold it back, it strikes at you with its two claws, Grog. Uh, that is going to be a 27. That hits. And a 14. Misses. Okay, you then from the one claw that gets you, you take six points of slashing damage. Okay. All right, everyone, roll initiative. Oh, oh. I'm so scared to roll. I know, it's been so bad. <laughs> That's what I've had. Oh, not horrible. Oh, good. Balls out. Uh, it's okay. I almost want to time All right, this combat. All right, so, 25 to 20? 51. 24. I'm curious as to how long it takes, because everyone right. constantly Gosh, complains about how long combat, combat takes 20 to D&D, which, from my own personal experience, I agree with. Combat t- feels like it takes forever. I'm curious as to how quick this feels, as well as how quick it literally is. We're gonna see. 18, anyone? 17. 17 19. as well. Oh yeah. 15. 15. All right, I got some scan line up there. 17, 17. They're both surrounded. Percy, awesome. Keyleth. Thanks. Uh, uh, okay, so 15 15. To 15. 13. <clears throat> All right. I'm 14. Tiberius and I'm 13 or 14. Come on, Grog! Wait, uh, 14? 13. Thir- 14. 14. All right. 14. Grog and Tiberius. It's the ghost pepper cookie. What All right, cool. What's going on in their chat? What the That's heck? All. Top of the round. Vex. Yeah. This is crazy. I am going to shoot the one. Before you do that. Oh, shit. As you're, oh, shit. As you're, as you're going to reach back, you look over into its strange glistening black dead insect-like eyes of the Umber Hulk. And you feel this strange wave of of just mental confusion hit over your head. Go ahead and make a... Uh, I knew it. Go ahead and make a saving throw. This is I going to be a charisma not, saving throw. I have not used an Umber Hulk before. Are they like psychic? The I fell out of a 120 foot hole. Okay, so that's... <clears throat> So you roll d20, add your charisma saving throw at the top. Okay, so I gotta do my math. That's 11, but I get a plus two from my ring that I'm wearing for saving throws. So. Okay. Hell yeah. It's a 13. 13. That's a great item. All right. The wave of confusion takes hold over your brain. Oh. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and find out what happens. Uh, Maybe I'll ask you to make some cookies. All right. Very confused. You, you, you reach for it and you just space out for a second. Your hands fall to your side, and you stand there. <laughs> oh, fuck. Umber Hulk Trinket is, is kind of looking for some sort of cue from you, you of what to do. Too. No, but Trinket's looking to you for some sort of direction and is getting none. Uh, and this is a very clustered space, too. I can oh. barely see you over this. That and brings us to I, um, Danlin. Don't worry, I know. I'll help you, my dear. if you're stealth. Um, he, he couldn't see you, but you could see him. Um, I'm gonna take a step back behind Trinket. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, Good call. Uh, Actually, wait. How far am I from my f- my my? Are you averting furthest... your gaze from the guys, or are you looking at them directly? Uh, no, averting my gaze. All right. Um, but <laughs> how far am I from my f- my Nobody look at the furthest fellow? Oh, I'm 60 feet. Okay. Yeah. I uh, and I sing I no. sing it my counter charm song. Um, oh. Uh, magic, magic, go away! Come again another day. <laughs> so all of us have advantage on saving throws for the charming spell. If okay. They are charming us. I don't know if they are. Uh, <laughs> counter charm this being very confusion. useful. No, what? Uh, don't think. No. Can, or charmed? It's not. It's not the same thing. Mm. This is technically a, a confusion effect. So. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Oh. Okay. So as you as you finish your song, you're like, I need you to go. Uh, it did not work. Mm, it doesn't seem to be having an effect, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I don't know if I can. Damn. So there's no. Oh, this is okay. This is the reason that I will say a good direction that I've seen in in one D and D. Still don't know if I'm gonna buy the 2024 uh, books. Uh, may or may not. Uh, but them using a lot more keywords. Like I just read the the Umber Hulk's uh, stat block, and it is just like confusing. Well, confusing K's. Oh, monstante de hombres. Interesting. Um, but it, there's there's no 
no keywords. No, no keywords in here. It's just some manner of confusion. And I am definitely on the train that for these sorts of effects, you should always keyword them. There should be a confusion status effect that we then all go and look at and we know what it means. Uh, I understand that that limits the flexibility and the creativity of of some of those things. Uh, but maybe, you know, confusion has some base effect. And for the Umber Hulk's confusion, maybe in the stat block it has, like, okay, you know, on top of the normal confusion, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that way you can then have discrete counters, like things like Counter Charm. I'm not saying that, like, Counter Charm should have worked in this circumstance. It's just that I think that more keywording uh, can be really helpful for developing a uh, counterplay. And then as my uh, bonus action, who got hit first? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'll just throw throw a healing word to him. Okay. Just go ahead and roll. Uh, Heal on him. D4 plus 5. Yep, you got it. <laughs> Percy. Mm. You heal... What is this? It's a 4. Oh, there's a 4. Okay. <laughs> so you heal nine. 9 hit points, and it's your turn. What do you got, Percy? Uh, up to 58. Let me just fix that. There we go. Um... Okay, where am I on the board? You are right here. Okay, so there's no there's no getting away. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I can basically without I remember I'm not supposed to look at these things. I'm just gonna I know where this thing is. I can put my pull my gun and just take a shot, right? Okay, you can, so inverting your gaze, you take a shot. You're at disadvantage on the attack roll. How much? You just disadvantage. I'm just disadvantage. Yeah. Well, I'm okay. That's fine. I'm gonna spend a, a grit point for a dead shot. So I'm gonna get a plus one to hit. Come on, purse. Aha! Uh -huh. That will be a, uh, with, the, with the plus one, that's uh, 28, 29, 30 to hit. Okay. Get Roll after again, it, nasty! You have because you're not looking at it directly. Oh, oh please be good. Uh, that's still 25 to hit. Nice. That hits. Nice. Go ahead and roll damage. And then I get extra damage because I did dead shot, so that's uh, plus one, so that will be uh, uh, that's, uh, 2d8 plus five plus ice, because I'm hitting with my ice shot. And that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 14 points of damage, of ice damage. 14 points of ice damage, nice. Mm -hmm. And then I have a second shot, and I'm just going to take one more shot cool. at him really quick. Okay, also with disadvantage. Uh, Not here. I fail. In fact, my gun jams. Oh! oh. Okay. So as you no go idea. to fire a so second, you oh. fire the first shot at Burning Gaze. We're you all going to die! Spin the barrel, go back to go ahead and fire again as you do. You pull it, the trigger for a second, and you feel a slight poof inside the barrel. Oh, Damn it! No. And you feel the, the the actual metal get extremely cold, and you have to shake it out. Like, oh, damn it! So my move, so there's, and since I can't move, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, my my movement, my my uh, my uh, minor is just gonna be fixing my, yeah. So okay, both actions just trying to fix the gun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, that brings us to. Damn. Kira. Kira, don't look at them. <laughs> okay. Just a note, don't forget, your your inspiration dice that you give can be used on saving throws as well. Okay. I haven't given any. No. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm a bear right now. Uh, you are a bear, which I will, for the sake of this, give you yeah, kitty. Minxie. Yep, Minxie uh, is the form, but you are a bear. Um, a bear. okay, first and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead... I don't know if this is gonna help, but I'm gonna throw up a fog cloud. Okay. Maybe. Okay. No. So, fog cloud. The that feels space, great. That feels like radius. it should be really helpful. What do you recall from what he did yesterday? So that this... obscures our vision, though, in no, it, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Our vision in it. Everybody gets obscured vision. But I mean, we wouldn't be able to see them. Would it yeah. help? Yeah. That could help. That's what I'm hoping. That could help. Do your thing. Do what or you would do. it be bad? Try it! Do, do it! Do your like, thing. Go with your yeah, do it. Well, don't right. think about what's I'm the worst that could possibly happen. I'm busting out a fog cloud and well, then... Well, to cast, you have to get out of, out of creature form, remember? Oh, that's right. I didn't throw up a... So you're a bear. Okay. I'm a bear. Never mind. I'm just going to do a full round of attacks go time. on go time. that one right. Keep your eyes closed. All right, so you there. move up to there. All right, go ahead and do your full round of attacks. I am doing multi-attack. All right, I have to... Uh... I have to pee again, so we're going to run into another bio break uh, before we get too much further into the combat. Um, 
But really quickly before I leave, I think that that's an amazing use of fog cloud, especially like as a, you know, as a as a DM looking at that, they already can't look at the things, uh, and even if they you know accidentally looked at them, if there's a fog cloud up, I'm giving them probably advantage on that on that saving throw uh, to you know look at them or not look at them, uh, and now the Umber Hulks have disadvantage when uh attacking you i think i or they might only have disadvantage when ranged attacking which i don't think would apply but i still think that would have been a great use of of fog cloud uh either way i'm gonna put on some lovely uh some lovely music put up the be right back screen and i will be right back We are back, we are back. We're back and we're ready. The bio break is complete, the bladder is empty, and I am ready to watch more Critical Role. Let's do it, everybody. Okay, are you burning your gaze or not? Mm -hmm. I'm okay, Bear, I'm blind. I have, I have, I'm like a blind fish. How are you I'm, I'm, I have dark, I have dark Nobody vision. Can look at dark, vision dark vision means you can see in the dark. Right. It doesn't mean that you don't see. <laughs> well, I'm a bear. You are a bear. <laughs> I'm eating at his leg. I'm not looking at his eyes. I'm not like waxing poetically at how sexy he is. No. I'm not whispering sweet nothings in his ear. I'm adding <clears throat> I'm gnawing at his leg. That's true. Go for the kill. Make a charisma okay. saving throw. Make a charisma saving throw? Yes. <laughs> Next oh, time, just goodness. divert your gaze. Whoa. Oh. That's good. I'm 16. 16? You can feel the oppression of the Amber Hulk's gaze, but you shrug it off. Your bear mind, not affected by the measly tricks and trades of these strange underground entities. Okay, You're now I'm attacking. Uh, first one probably misses. I'm with my claw. Uh, 14. 14 misses. She got a pizza. With the claw attack, do I have two claw attacks? Do I roll for both? Yeah. 
Okay, so the first one is uh, 19. It hits. Second one, second claw attack is uh, 18. Also hits. Okay, so I am. Roll damage on each of those. 2d6 plus 5 twice. Six plus it's eleven. Five so eleven. Ooh. Plus uh seventeen twenty damage. Twenty damage. Nice. Damage. 20, oh, 25. 25. Sorry, twenty-five. Alrighty. Yes. A lot of damage. 25 damage. So as you shake off the effect, you reach for oh, flashing out it two large strikes. The second one gets a distinct carve into the back of the yeah. Umbra Hulk's high. You can see a portion of its Chit in his back armor and gets kind of <laughs> pulled off in a chunk and it <laughs> reels back from the impact and readies itself for a second round of attacks. Me and Trinket. There you go. Going at this. <laughs> Bear uh, style. They go. Uh, this one turns towards and moves this way to a focus on the cave bear that just thrashed against its hide, while this one turns and moves in towards Grog. Uh, but now Trump says he's the... Actually, no, he's saved. Fixed to Grog. So, making its multi-strike against... Although, uh, it probably wouldn't look kill? so cramped if there weren't that seven of them. 26 to hit. Hits. That's mandibles. Uh, 17 to hit with its claw. Hits. And uh, 18 to hit with its claw. Hits. All right, Oof. so you take six points of slashing damage from the first claw, uh, eight points of slashing damage from the second claw, and then the mandibles deal 15 points of slashing damage. Oof. As the Umber Hulk just turns to you and as a reaction to what your first assault. Uh, the last one was 15. It just unleashes an array of strikes against you. <laughs> that brings us to the other one who's attacking you, Grog. Back at him, yeah. That is a 12 to hit, pretty this sure misses. Uh, another 12 to hit, because it likes to roll fours, apparently. <laughs> Give me another four. For the mandibles, it's a 20. Oh. 20 hits. Take a damage, fool. Uh, that is uh, 18 Has points Grog of slashing damage yet? Is he raging? I have a half damage to all bludgeoning and cursing against slashing damage. You haven't raged yet. Sorry, not raging! You haven't raged yet! You haven't raged, raged. Turned yet. I was so just angry. wondering. I know. You're about to be so angry. <laughs> 18 points. <laughs> You're so angry. 18 yeah. points of slashing damage. The mandibles crush down on your body and you can feel them pierce in your chest. Your exposed musculature is then torn in a jagged form as you feel the blood begin to pour down the front of your it's right. torso. It's okay. nice. That was brutal. Uh, that My ends their coming. turn. Uh, Vax. Okay, so I can see what's up. I saw what it did to my sister, so I'm gonna, I'm behind it, I'm gonna jump on its back, I'm gonna swivel my daggers Great. around and just stab it in the Wait, face. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing the back of his fucking spider yeah. head. I'm gonna stab him in the face twice. Go for it. Okay. Oh, uh, bug's back. Twenty. Lady that hits. Bug. Okay. okay, so then I'll do that. Oh, the other one's an eighteen. I rolled it in advance. Um, <laughs> that counts. That that's counts. one. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, ten plus sneak attack damage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ten. So it doesn't know you're there. You were stealth. Okay. Ten, <laughs> yeah. Okay. One, oh. Four. Eight. Nine. 13, 26, 36 damage from 30. the first dagger. Woo! His face Alrighty. in his face, and the next was an 18. Not in his face. Huh? Not in his face. Not in his face, all it's right. It's back. You know right. what, I I'm might. The one. If, you're, if you're not down with this, let me know in the uh, in the chat. But what I might do is turn on the, uh, the playback speed multiplier right now. Speed it up to like uh, 1.25, maybe even 1.5. Uh, get through the combat quicker because there are some like some fun things that are happening and I'll obviously want to slow it down if any of them go down or there's something more dramatic but while we're just kind of in the in the slug fest I think we can maybe get through this one a little bit quicker there's no story happening you know not much for me to react to honestly Okay, so as you leap onto its back, uh, kind of grab perch on one of its uh, chitinous plates, bring your first dagger forward and jam it to the side of its head. As it pulls back, you hear uh, as it reacts to immediate pain, it begins to kind of, kind of reach one of its claws and try and knock you off. As you do, you Put the blade back into your belt, 
grab with your other hand, pull out your other dagger, and slam it into the other side of its head. Yeah. This time it kind of shrugs you off, and you manage to just land on your feet barely behind it, still faced away from you. Uh, that brings us to Grog. Oh, rage. Rage. Now I'm angry. Okay. I would like to rage, and not only rage, I would like to go into a frenzied rage <laughs> for three full attacks. All right. Yeah. You what, can, wait, what? While and I'm, so, I'm raging so hard that I, I put all the capillaries in my eyeballs, so I can't really see that well. <laughs> and I just swing a lot. All right, I'm going to check one thing real fast. Oh, oh, no. shit, don't check. Look, I'm rolling. <laughs> 30. They once was a bard from Nantucket. He <laughs> got his flute caught. I gave one level of charge with the rage. I will say, situationally, because of the fact of your rage, that you have advantage on the saving throw against the confusion effect. Oh. Yeah. As you are just, your yeah. mind is so filled with aggression. Yeah, I got that big, like, nasty is that, thing. So make that's Christmas mindless rage, rage, but I think that's supposed to do a similar thing to counter charge, isn't it? 11. Roll again to your advantage. Five. Oh, no, no! Oh. Let's see what happens. No. Roll a two. So. Oh. No, he's raging. As you too. rage. No. Damn it. You uh, feel the uh, influence fuck. of the Umber Hulk's gaze pierce your eyes and the, the fury. Yeah, I, mean, I think he's in. He's relating this to mindless rage, which is you can't be charmed or frightened. If you are charmed or frightened, the effect is suspended. Oh, he's giving him advantage. I think Counter Charm should have given it advantage you as well, then. Reach out and slash with your axe. Although maybe it's like the stacking However, effects. He's trying to give him something. Reach for the Umber Hulk. Go ahead and roll an attack, Rob. Oh, no. Oh. Is he hitting us? A one! Oh. Hey! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> <laughs> There's a loud clanging sound oh, as a giant, God. angry, swooping, bladed great axe misses Tiberius' head by inches <laughs> before slamming into the stone right up against the side of the wall. You can just see now this kind of loose, crazy look in his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. No, his no, no, you're all screwed up. We have Wonderful. a problem. Yeah, this could be bad. There's no problem. Tiberius, yeah. Oh, Tiberius. Tell me, Tiberius. It's my turn? No, that's your turn. Oh, that's my turn. Tiberius, Tiberius help. No, no, no. At least you won't want. But it yeah. doesn't hurt anybody. Yet. I look at Rob, and I'm like, stop it. I cast a spell magic. Stop it, Rob. Cast a spell magic? Yeah. On Rob? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, he's being controlled right now. What about? You can do whatever. More natural. It's creature based. She's also being good. I know, but you're a big open crazy man. No, it is a magical force. Yes, it is. Magical force to make it safe. Go ahead and make her hunt check. Yes. 17. 17. Uh, the chaotic influence of your brain begins to dissipate, and the yeah! rage-filled gaze begins to fill your eyes once again, this Thanks time clarifying yes, time on the Umber Hulk in front of you. Oh I'm not done yet. I slap him. Just get on, get on this, will you? I use two SP points to do quickening spell. I cast a uh, grand column under myself, 15 feet up in the air. Okay. Nice. So, the stone beneath Tiberius' feet rises up, creating a column 15 feet above the rest. Pathfinder spell? I'm not platform. aware of that. Put him right there. <laughs> Looking down upon the battlefield. <laughs> That is my turn. All right, Vex, you're up. Oh, do I have to cast a saving throw or am you're I badass, you're uh, badass. Are you looking at it or are you hurting your gaze? Oh, no, I'm averting my gaze even okay. though I'm confused, apparently. Well, the confusion only lasts. Oh, okay, good. I am not. Well, okay, what's what's that thingy behind me? What? Oh, we've got these? Uh, this here? No. Oh, yeah. This here? Yeah, this is raw. How high is it? Uh, this is about 25, 30 feet up. Oh. And this is where the lights are coming from. You okay. can't look over that way. All right, cool. Well, I avert my gaze, but I listen very carefully to the sound of where it's coming from. And I shoot in. Uh, I mentioned this last time that I think uh, on really any battle map, but especially on gridded battle maps, I think number one that verticality is super important. And when you are having obstructions, which again are I think are very important, uh, noting in like a little small text how tall they are can go a long way towards um, making creative players understand their options, right? If they have to ask every single time, you know, how tall is this thing? Can you describe this thing? They might get a little bit uh, tired of, of being creative. Um, but if you just say, like, you just make a little note, like, okay, like, up here it's, you know, flat or relatively flat at 30 feet, or this goes up 100 feet, or this goes up to question mark, um, you know, outside of your, your view. Uh, I think that that can be a really quick shorthand towards uh for for your players and then they can ask for more description if they want it um but i think that a lot of times just how tall is it is what a lot of people really want to know okay so go ahead and make your attacks against yeah, can, uh 
Let's do the one that is surrounded so I get like what, flanking bonus or something? Uh, like for range, you would not get a bonus for that. Lame. All right. So are you shooting the one behind you, this one? Sure. Okay. No, up. no, no, no. The other one. Okay. All right. So <laughs> make your attacks with a disadvantage as you're kind of keeping your eyes back and shooting in a general direction. Big money, no whammies. 12. Both of them were 12. Oh, All right. but plus 11. Plus 11 hits. Yes. All right. Oh, and I get two attacks, right? You do, yes. Okay. Still disadvantage. Yep. 15 plus 11 hits. It also hits, yeah. So both attacks hit. Yes! Yeah. Did you want to use your bonus action for anything? Oh, yes! Hunter's Mark! Alright, so you throw Hunter's Mark on this Umber Hulk there. Yes, I do! Which you're like, uh, you're my quarry! Uh, okay, your eyes are <laughs> back. You go ahead and pull your first and second arrow. <laughs> letting him lose, okay. kind of letting a little bit of faith take your arrows to the wind. Can both I finding purchase on your foe. Use Blood Seeking Bow on that one. You can, yes. Sweet! Alright, cool. So that's, um, fifth, no, 11, um, and then. Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> she dropped it. Take the drop. Plus blood seeking, which is ten damage. Plus hunter's mark, which is a six. Which is three. So total damage of. Oh, I have to add. Uh, Fifteen <laughs> plus eleven plus three. Six. Twenty-nine damage. Woo! Nice. Woo! So as your arrow sink into him, one blast into him. <laughs> fire cascades up the side. You can see the middle of his plates beginning to burn and, and torch the cinderous glow. Uh, it kind of reels back. <laughs> He's in his claws ready. Now fixated on you because you've just announced your presence to it. I'm looking back. All right. Uh, anything you want to do with uh, trinket? trinket? Oh yeah. Can he run up and attack the other one while keeping his eyes down? Uh, he would. He would have to use one of your attacks to do that. Oh okay. Well then he's just hanging out. Trinket's just hanging hand. out. He's protecting skin. Oh. Yeah, big old bear protecting your gnome. Yeah. Protect the gnome. No yeah. coverage. Uh, no he no this week. Coverage. No possibly go wrong. No watch. Uh, Scanlan, you're up. <laughs> Scanlan, uh, ride the bear, Scanlan. Ride the bear. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, yes. I, I will. I will just step forward a little and, and I will cast polymorph on our big friend that we're surrounded, <laughs> and I'll turn him in, into a, a snail. <gasps> a snail. Oh. All right. What's can you do that? That's yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can just pull the glasses off. Oh, uh, uh, and I threw that horn, hand, uh, the horn of clarity or whatever. So it's seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen. Yes. All right. Uh, no, nineteen. Sorry, nineteen. Nineteen. Plus two. So, as the two Umber Hulks are there, what? Uh, yeah, the ones in the center of the group veers <laughs> 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 back and begins to unleash a series of attacks and then into this tiny what? snail form awesome! on the ground. Don't yes. touch the snail Why? until it be, he'll poof out into the fucking big eye Don't again. hurt the snail. Leave it. You can leave pick it. up the snail. That's the snail. Leave it alone. Don't do anything. Don't take care of the snail. There's a tiny, tiny little snail on the ground now that looks very confused and very... That's a confused. Very confused, which is ironic for a number hole. Because you'll be confused. <laughs> and, uh, I, and I throw uh, as a bonus action, I, I give dice to uh, who's, who's coming up next. Who's coming up soon? Next to be Percy. Uh, uh, Percy, you get mm. dice. How, what, what dice do I get? You get a, plus a, D8, a D8, D8 for right. inspiration. Excellent. Percy, you're up. <laughs> I gotta do my head. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> do your head, work it out. Do your head, do the head. Oh, it's not ready. <laughs> I'm, gonna take a, I'm gonna take one of my two actions to clear my, to clear my gun. Yeah, the jam. The yeah, clear the jam, and then set up for a fire shot, and I'm gonna take a fire shot. Um, am I at a disadvantage? Uh, oh. I've seen where. Oh, you're so weird. So weird. Oh, you're not better. All right, so who are you shooting? Fuck. I'm shooting the, the our, our friend over there. I okay. just sort of turn and, and I'm firing. Okay. So am I at a disadvantage? Averting your gaze, or are you? I'm I'm averting my gaze, but I can I can I, can, I know where it is. So right. I'm, all right. So I'm so firing the dice. Okay. Um, uh, Fourteen with the disadvantage. Fourteen with the disadvantage will miss. Ah. The fire shot arcs nice. off into the distance. Oh, oh like a tiny actually. Okay, inspiration. Add the inspiration dice. 17. 17 will just barely hit. Oh! <laughs> well done. Well Bard done. is getting ah, a ton of great inspiration. inspiration. Um, that's going to do uh, the bump, the bump. I have to wait. To, to that one's open. Which one? That's uh, 17 ice damage. I fire damage. 17 fire damage. 17 fire damage. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you hear the shot hit, and you hear a cracking sound as one of its plates actually freezes and shatters off of its body, exposing kind of a fleshy undercarriage. Noise. Uh, undercarriage. This Umber Hulk is starting to look a little rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That brings us to the top. Do uh, you want to move or you stay where you are? Um, I'm going to step back, to get, bring you back uh, like two to three steps, just like back, back away. Yeah. Just like here? Avoid the snail. <laughs> Don't step on the <laughs> Not snail. Not stepping on the snail. Everybody. Yeah, that's good. There? Okay, good. All right, that brings us to <laughs> laser pointers. We have use. Laser pointer. Keyleth, you're up. Okay, after seeing Grog, Get confused. I turn Again. and I go straight for his throat, and I'm trying to drag him into the creek. Okay. I'm gonna take Ooh. the upper hook into the creek right behind me. Okay. So go ahead and roll for a grapple. Sure. All right. 
Come on, Kate. Have like rebel as a <laughs> bear hug, man. Bear hug. Yeah, yeah just take that it. one. Uh, when grapple is a bear. Is it a strength track, I guess? Anyone else? Should I move mean, mean, grapple's mind? Run the book fast? Uh, just be sure. Do you have numbers for rhinoceros in here? I know for this. I can be a rhinoceros. It's a contest. Why have you not been a rhinoceros yet? It just hasn't been used yet. I'm waiting for the right time. She can only turn into things she's doing. I'm a squirrel little bird. You should be a rhinoceros. I'm just waiting for you to scream. It's more fun. Rules check in. It's more fun. The most engaging part of D. Bear! Oh my. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Do I use strength check then? So it is an athletics check. Oh. I'm a, I don't have stats. I'm a bear. Like no, five. you use a bear stats. But all I have are the basic six. Right. What's the strength? Five. Yeah. So that's what I do. Yeah. Add, okay. Roll the dice. Add a plus five. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Twenty. Natural twenty. <laughs> with you, reach for it and latch onto it with your claws and your teeth under the Gone umbra the All right. Uh, so that's your first attack. You can go ahead while scrapple and attack with the other strikes. I'm taking them underwater. Okay. You pull, oh pulling them underwater. <laughs> you both plunge underneath the water surface. Take a big old breath right beforehand, and I'm okay. going underwater. All right, Wait, so. Is, are you, can you go I mean, yeah, good go. enough for the no, druid who has temp HP. Like, there's a waterfall. It's fine. It's now its turn. It's going to try and break your grapple. Make an athletic check. Against the strength, I guess it's uh, 20. 20, okay. Yeah. You I mean, not 10 HP, but, but they have the water, you know, wild shape the surface. <laughs> Still slashing about. Um, so it's going to go to make attacks against you. Uh, that is a 14. Hits. 14 hits you? I'm a bear. My armor class is 12 right now. Well, no, you keep your armor class. I keep my armor class? Pretty sure. No. Mm. Yes, the answer to that yes, is yes. Yeah, you do. No, let's see real fast. <laughs> oh, actually, yes. one. The keep DM subscribing to Jesus. Geek and Sundry, everybody. Exactly. <laughs> We're going for 1,200 subscribers tonight, and if we reach that number, that means good for the you. Other one. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. go Sam will, will write a ballad. You gain the scores. Yeah, I will. By the way, this music is just great. Well, it's, it's, 12 plus, it's right here with the 12 plus proficiency modifier, I think. Yeah. Now, for now, oh, for, for now we'll say it hits. Plus, plus. So I want to hold this up. They're not supposed to play Really? No, you you, know, you gave me color class. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did. So yeah, it hits you. Yeah. All right. The second strike. Uh, I mean, you're gaining a you. giant all pool of you. HP. You That's good enough. <laughs> six points of slashing damage. Uh, Eleven points of slashing damage. And... Six, 11, 17. It's okay. Total of 26 points of slashing damage. I am no longer a bear. <laughs> so you lose your grip. As your form reverts, you are now back to Keyless form in the water. <laughs> Um, can I cast a concentration spell on myself? Uh, no, because you've used your actions to That's grapple. It. So you are now just back in the keyless form oh, no. underwater. <laughs> you kind of catch your breath and realize you're now underwater in your darkness with an umber hulk right on you. Hey, bro. <laughs> What's up? Fancy meeting you. Back to up. Okay, so uh, first thing I do is lean down and pick up the snail off the ground and say, uh, hey, um, go fuck yourself. And I throw him into the waterfall. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Over here? Yeah. All right, go ahead and go ahead and roll a range attack. So roll at dexterity. Oh, okay, okay. Great, great, great. Love uh, that. Love that. Oh, no. Come on. Reload the page. What a great as use of a, uh, now back to of a polymorph of enemy. That's great. Um, Just toss him somewhere. Can I cast a con- <laughs> uh, you kind of Fancy meeting you back here. And I throw him into the water. Oh, Jesus. Over here? Yeah. All right, go ahead and go ahead and roll a range attack. So roll at dexterity. Okay, oh okay, okay. Great, great, great. Uh, dexterity, you say eighteen. Eighteen? No, no, it's higher than no, that. It's fine if he drowns. Dexterity. Dexterity. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's twenty-one. If yeah, he drowns, yeah. You twenty-two. Throw, twenty-two. You throw that's an arcs very, over. That's, that's spoof, that's lands in the water. Oh, and goes and over into the water. Whatever animal. Whatever animal. Toodaloo, shit face. He threw the waterfall. No, he threw the snail over the waterfall. Now, that seems like a bonus action to me, right? <laughs> so then I, that's an attack? Okay. Uh, yeah. That's an attack. That's good. It's the world's though. easiest grapple throw. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> that's it? Okay. Well, I, I mean, that's, an, that's my action, right? Correct. You can, move. One. you can move. I mean, oh, uh, all right. No, so then I'll, I'll, I'll hop through through Percy and my sister and run up behind uh, the shithead who's fucking okay. with. Make, make an acrobatics check? Yeah. Tumble through them. That's easy. Hey, yeah, in the water, though. 16 plus 29. Yeah, you're fine. And where you want to go? Uh, right up behind Shitface there. Right there. And do I have anything left? Great use of, uh, of a um, polymorph dead. Well, it was the attack to throw Great it. You had your second off. Second attack. Well, let's stab him in the ass. Okay, right? you have disadvantage because it's currently in the water thrashing about and okay. it's hard to see. So. Mm, well, that's not very good. Uh, 15. 15? Misses, unfortunately. Okay. 
So as you kind of slash down with your dagger into the water, it's just too hard to really make out what that form moving is. I still feel pretty good about that, right? <laughs> no, it's Rog, you're up. You can't stand. If I'm ready to rage with you, <laughs> I'll run towards the water. Haunted by nightmares of Sebastian and the little mermaid, and I leap into the water and start slashing and All right. slashing. <laughs> Go ahead and make a free attack, Rob. Les poissons, les poissons, hee hee hee. Oh, you bitch. 18 plus, uh, uh, that's uh, 26. 26 hits. Okay, good. Second <laughs> attack. 26. Hits. Okay. And, uh, ah, 25. <laughs> Good. <laughs> As you come charging forward, just argh, leaving bits of foam cascading off the side of your mouth, your eyes just glazed over with white. You bring the axe down into the water, form towards where the splashing is, keeping mindful that Keyleth might be in there somewhere, but you can very much see the larger form in the field. So It's, it's all about sushi, fine. right? Yeah. So damage on the first strike? Uh, eight. Second one is uh, 16. Eight, 16, that's 24. And 17. 30. What's 34 plus 10? 34. 34. Krog. Oh, 34 points of damage. Shit. As your axe comes down, slam once into the water. You see one of the claws doosh, start pulling itself up out of the surface. Its head's still under the water. You slam the axe down. Doosh, you see the arm actually snaps yeah. and begins to drift down the river. As it looks up at you, its eyes open before the gaze can meet yours. The axe comes down and plunges itself directly into the forehead of the Umber Hulk. <laughs> shunk sound. As it does, its body goes limp and begins to float down the water. Yeah. Hey, there it goes. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up in, um, Someone actually use it. I I haven't seen. I mean, obviously the the. Uh, I don't think he's frenzied before, but we'll see uh, if the exhaustion ever comes into play. Most of the time that I have actually seen uh, these berserker barbarians played in actual games, uh, very the the exhaustion just kind of gets ignored. Be not really ignored, but kind of ignored by proxy because they almost always directly long rest after the uh, the big combat. But it seems like this was not the end of the dungeon. At least I wouldn't think so. I don't think the Umber Hulks are creating these abominations. So the exhaustion might actually come into play. Okay. You help Keyleth <laughs> out of the water. Um, at this point, the snail form which doesn't have a whole lot of hit points, Shit. has taken enough damage to alleviate itself from the polymorph. As um. the spell fades, as the snail form is destroyed, the other Umber Hulk begins clawing its way up the side of the mountain, burrows through the actual oh, stonework, balls. and bursts out of the ground right behind Took you. Took its turn, Max. though. <laughs> oh, fuck it up. Come on, drop <laughs> Wasted it. I mean, you trade one out of seven so player turn. turns uh, to waste this so one monster's out. turn? Hell yeah. Down the toilet. All that's the way so out. worth. Yeah. All right. That brings us to the top of the round. Uh, Tiberius. He was at least uh, badass. He was elegant. He was but very elegant. I think it was a wonderful thought. Fireball. Okay. Choo. Go for it. Go that's good. Roll for the attacks. Just pass, pass it, please. Smoke yeah. It. Any sort of directed spell like that, you have to roll and add your spell range from modifier. Sweet. That, that does not hit. What'd you roll? Um, uh, eleven. With disadvantage. So. You hold an 11 total? Uh, 10. Oh, you, yeah, you missed. No. So as you aim your firebolt, poof. Okay. You just kind of... Last, last time I, I talked about uh, some, some pet peeves that I have. Um, and one of them being like, oh, can I roll this? Uh, and I do call it a pet peeve. It's not that bad. Like uh, being like, can I roll perception? Can I roll investigation for this thing? I much prefer it when players say like, I want to do this thing, and then the DM asks for a check. Um, I mean, that is, like, by the book, by the rules, how it's supposed to be done, and I think it leads to more flexibility with what the DM asks for um, and just allows the DM to just not ask for rolls as often. Um, but not that bad. Just a pet peeve. Another pet peeve of mine is when players say they roll – they look at the value. They don't say the value. They say, oh, that doesn't hit. I, I don't know. For that, that like really... Because something could have changed. Maybe the AC got lowered somehow and you don't know that as the player. Obviously, that doesn't happen very often. Um, but I don't know. It, it takes... Um, it takes 
creative power away from the DM. And I don't think that players want to do that. Like DMs or players want the DM to be able to make creative decisions for the good of the story and the good of the game. Um, and, and so just being like, that doesn't hit. Especially when you don't, I don't think they know the lower boundary yet. I don't, maybe they do. Maybe they know that like, you know, a 13 wouldn't hit. And so he knows that a 10 wouldn't hit. But uh, still, I don't know. Unless it's a well-defined, like it's a 13 and you roll an eight. And then I would rather you say like, oh, it, it's below what we already know. I don't know. Again, not that bad, just a pet peeve. Reverting your gaze and it kind of jumps over and arcs through the rest of the cavern, lighting it as it goes like a flare. Um, that leads the cavern. to Scanlan. Scanlan? Or actually, no, Vex is up and then Scanlan, sorry. Me? Top around. Yeah, see you. you. Okay, it well, I'm gonna keep my gaze averted, but I just heard it. And I'm gonna... That rhymed. I'm gonna attack it. With Go for arrows. it. So right. two arrows, not... I turn Disadvantage on each attack. Oh, okay. This is not my... I want to keep yeah, this uh, No, lying. 20. 20 hits. Go ahead for the second attack. Uh, uh, 19. Both hit. Okay, Double good. damage on each. Uh, is, is this the one that I hunter's mark? No, the other one. The other one was, yeah. Okay, that's fine. 10 But you could switch over your hunter's mark. 13 is 23, and I switched over my hunter's with mark your, my bonus, your bonus action. action. So I'm going to... <laughs> Uh, one, like, We're so all learning D&D. Uh, 24. 24 points of damage. All right, gotcha. Different spells, <laughs> different arrows. Effects, different end up features. piercing part of the armor. Each sink in a good solid six, seven inches or so. Uh, it angly <laughs> at the impact, but it wasn't enough force to send it back at all. Uh, but it knows exactly where you are. Uh, that brings us to Scanlan. Scanlan's going to move right in front of where I believe that's Percy. Save the day, Scanlan. Oh, yeah, I should have ran it up. There. Come on, right. Ricky, just like last week. Uh, uh, toss, toss another dice to Percy. He seems to need that. Thank you. And I'm gonna cast a uh, lightning bolt at the thing who's wet from being in the water, yes? So yeah. it'll oh. is gonna be pretty bad on him. All right, so uh, because you're kind of averting your gaze, people will look away. No, because you don't roll to attack, but oh. it gets advantage on a saving throw okay. because of that aspect. So uh, we'll roll natural 20%, so it takes half damage. So go ahead and roll your 8d6. I don't bolt. think that's actually how it works out from your fingers. That would work, but maybe. 8d6? Yeah. Eight? Yeah. Eight? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 28! 28. Okay, 14 Woo! points of damage to the Umber Hulk as the bolt of lightning cascades through its body. It lights up for a second as so you see the, the the crawling fingers of electricity kind of shoot through its plates. And I like crawling form. fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that was the name of that one girl. Um, yes. yes. No. As, as the bolt grounds itself, oh, the crawling. rest of the water on its form kind of psh, evaporates from the sheer force of the electricity. Oh, so Umberhulk still standing, angry, in pain, uh, and standing, although it's still looking a little worse for wear. That's it. You don't want to do that to an Umberhulk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Percy, you're up. Taking my shot, I'm averting my eyes, right. so. Use those dice, use those dice. Uh, Woo! 24 to hit. That was my disadvantage. Ooh. I had the disadvantage. Awesome, that hits. Uh, that's 1d8 minus five. Uh, that's, bleh, that's terrible, that's six points of damage. Um, I'm taking my second shot. All right. Could be worse. In the mouth. <laughs> oh, wait, but it's disadvantage. disadvantage. I rolled twice. I rolled a 19 and a 20, which, which means it doesn't critical, matter, which right? are both my criticals. Yeah. 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 Just one. Yeah. 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 Let's, yeah. Go. Let's go. So I'm also going to spend my die. So Where that's. Are your last names again? Well, the, oh, oh, the, the die is for, the the attack. Attack. Oh, for attack, attack, skills, and saving throws, not for damage. Come on. That's 11 points of damage. 11 points of damage from the first one? 11 points of damage from the second one. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, oh. I just realized that I've been playing Paper Mario music in the background the whole time. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll we'll let the uh, normal music from uh, Critical Role play. Uh, no, that, I, I doubled it. The, it's just one d eight becomes two d eight, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Okay, so eleven points damage. Gotcha. So as you as you kind of rear back, your shot it resounds. It hits the plate, shatters it on the other side of its chest. You can now see this kind of weird purplish goo beginning to spill from its wounds. You see it's holding itself up and it's having a hard time keeping Easy. physical form there. Uh, Keyleth, you're up. Oh. Um, cool. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Word. Um, I mean, he's still a person. No. I am going to go ahead and also do a call lightning spell. <laughs> Bam. Call okay. lightning right Call lightning head. it is. So, as you begin to complete your spell, you can see now the upper arch, the 100-foot archway, the ceiling of this area begins to fill with this strange, clouding, thunderous boom. As a rain cloud is created and summoned, 
across the rooftop. Yeah. At which point, Keyleth brings her hand up and pulls down as a single bolt, streaks through the air, slamming into the same lightning bolt wound that you left previously on it, where the edges of its armor are still glowing from the heat. And, and uh, yeah, go ahead and yes. Oh, I ju it just gets straight damage? Yeah, it gets a bonus on its saving throw, though, or advantage, which it makes. I get 3d10. 3d10? Oh, go for it. Call Lightning is a crazy so spell, if you haven't read it. Uh, it does a lot of damage. Only, it gets a bonus for being outdoors. Uh, 11 damage. 11 damage to the armor, which is half. You may save and throw to it. Save and throw? Yeah. Because you have to avert your gaze. Like, like, you're trying to work at this whole thing where you're all basically at a severe disadvantage fighting this thing unless you want to be completely fucked yeah. over. Um, all right. created sunglasses for him or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's now his turn. Oh, it's still uh, alive. It turns <laughs> and runs past to the one who shot it with the angry lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> the tiny gnome that now is, no. a, is a delicious morsel <laughs> in the mandibles of an Umber Hulk. It comes running forward like a giant like armored gorilla. <laughs> oh no. Reaching back with both of its claws, swiping at you, Scanlan. That is a 23 to hit. Oh, yeah. 25 to hit. Oh. Its mandibles are 24 to hit. That hits three times. Yep. <laughs> you take 13. Oh no! But you're so 24. Ah. Thirty-eight points of slashing damage. This is the sound I make. Oh! <laughs> as it just strikes you with all of its form now, you're almost oh. into the ground. Blood oozing from your face as gashes slash wounds are across your entire body. It's looming over you, and trying to finish you off next round. Uh, that brings us to Vax. Okay, so he's now got his back turned to me. I'm just gonna stick both knives into his guts and says, "No one touches the gnome." Oh. Right into his guts. That's shit. So fuck that, and this one is way better, so that's 27. 27 hits, definitely. Woo! Okay, this is the flame tongue. It, exactly, it is considered flanking, because Ooh, yes. it's going to Plus two is six. Six. Two, three, five, four, five, uh, seven. 9, 18, 24 damage with the second knife sneak attack into his ball sack. How do you want to do this? Yeah! yeah! Oh, how do you want to do back this? Of Didn't ask Grog how he wanted to do it, it, but... He's bumming up the back of him and just oh. spill it all at the bottom. So as it's... Right, 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 right next to him, it might spill on me. Oh, I'm going that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. As it's looming over Scanlan, who's on its back, it's tearing into him and starting to gut it best it can, and he's swimming from beneath. Zip. You rush underneath, tumble, bring your dagger up, and slam it right oh. on the bottom of its abdomen. Yep. As you do it, <laughs> looks down towards you, and right before its gaze can meet yours, you yank back with all your might, basically scissoring and jagged, drawing the blade up the back of its body. As you do it, <laughs> leaps forward. It's now soft torso and belly left over from the armor plates being shot off. Spills a number of its warm innards right onto Scanlan's <laughs> body and form. Oh, 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 I went in my mouth! <laughs> And then it collapses on top of him. <laughs> he takes six points of crushing damage. <laughs> as the Umber Hulk collapses on top I of him. I run over and uh, shove the Umber Hulk off of Scanlan. Okay. Right, right, turning down the speed. Turning down the speed. Oh my gosh. What did what we. Alright, what did we think about the speed up during combat? Should I speed it up even more? It was at 1.25, and, uh, and I sped it up to 1.5. That combat took 45 minutes for two combatants. Um, just because, uh, just because it did. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know in the uh, in chat if you have an opinion on if we should maybe go even faster next time, bump it up to like 1.5, and maybe just turn it down if something interesting happens. Because I feel like I have to watch it. Because I have to know if there's, you know, interesting plays getting made, if there are any character moments. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of um, interesting things that can happen during combat, but a lot of it is kind of kind of boring from a um, from a viewer perspective, at least in my opinion. Maybe I'm totally wrong here, and I'm super down to watch through it, give commentary if uh, if the feedback on this question is like, no, we love watching combat. Uh, so just, yeah, let me know in chat. Let me know in the comments on the VOD uh, if you want me to go faster, slower, stay the same, what have you. <laughs> <laughs> I go over to Scanlan and I just, I just lay my hands on him and I cast Cure Wounds in a level two spot. Nobody touches my man wife. <laughs> 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 What's that one? spell do? Um, you do. It's two d h plus two d eight plus ten healing. You roll right. 
Do I roll or does four, he? Four witch spells? This is... I'm doing cure wounds on him. I will say the reason that I'm two? so concerned well, yeah, about the you know, combat for if people like it or don't is I so just watch the viewership 16, drop <laughs> while we were watching the combat. Just tink, 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 tink. So, uh, as you heal him, touching with the spell, you kind of wipe the Umber Hulk acre off of your hand. Yeah. I you cast press and clean Scanlan. everybody up. <laughs> just get in the water just, and clean yourself up. Just, we have uh, running water. I think I want to keep it on. <laughs> you know, clean already. Yeah. It's yes. a badge of honor. <laughs> it's a badge of honor. I, like the walking dead. I think I'm going to the blood on me, if you don't mind. All right. <laughs> All right. That's uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Gross. Warning to well, it's kind of weird. All right. I'm into it. Yeah. All right. So you still hear the rushing of the water down below. You now stand at this portion of the cavern. The dull glow in the distance of some sort of light source in that direction. The rest of the cavern just opens up this way. Uh, Let's go towards the light. Can we take a quick when in doubt. short rest? No, short rest. Run. Short rest. Short rest and heal up. I'm running. <laughs> Grog grows let some running. <laughs> Grog, who's interested. I'm frenzy raging. Oh, God, Grog, Grog, no. It's a bright, shiny he thing. I'm going right right there. there. I'm unscathed, so I run after Grog just to get him back up if he needs. Okay. I'll, I'll follow after Vex. <laughs> All right, you guys <laughs> run out. Eventually, you come around the corner to see what looks like a well. campfire. Oh. 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 And it looks like a setup with a uh, small bundle of, kind of looks like a, like a bedding. There's a campfire set up. It's what? mostly out at this point. Like there's still a little bit of a flame the flicker. Paladin's it's just embers campfire? for the most part. Um, not up here. I start hacking away at the bed and just suck <laughs> the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grog starts hacking away at the bedding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just watching and shrugging. No, Lou, Lou, Lou search around and see yeah. the I try to keep like a six or seven foot <laughs> difference. Oh no. Uh, Three crossbow bolts <laughs> flying out of dick. nowhere, two hitting Grog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and these just weren't helping I with the freaking umber holes? Like I guess it was like three <laughs> turns <laughs> total. As as what is that? Blue. That was a like, Coleman. Like 18 right? seconds. I guess uh, that was, that was that <laughs> Never bad. attack the bedding before you know the threat good. count. Just, God. Grog, you take seven points of piercing damage, which uh, is half oh. to yeah. four because you're raging. Right. As you can see, what looks like three small <laughs> Durgar. No, they're dwarves. Uh, no, that's Durgar. That's dark dwarves. Oh. I consider Durgar. myself a nerd. <laughs> and some strange beast you've not seen before seems to be accompanying one of them. Is what that is that? It looks like an oversized, swollen brain. It's hanging brain. With a set of claws. Crang? Brain? It's, it's just like a oh, large brain could... with. A set of the intellect devourer like could a, like a one hit or two what? with Grog. It can't be good. Uh, take that, take that first. Going off yeah. the same initiative order, they've gone. Uh, I rolled a oh my now. gosh! Yes, more so you combat. Been seen and you have the first action. Are they on the same level? As it's probably going to be the rest uh, of this. They are. Yes. Session. Okay. I'm gonna. So I'm gonna go up. Like not because. Not because I don't like combat, but like I, like I said, I, I watched the graph go. Way, uh, during the combat, so it seems like uh, people aren't liking it. But you know, let me know if I'm if I'm wrong, if I'm interpreting things wrong. But I'm gonna turn it up to like 1.5, and we're gonna speed through this because clearly something interesting is happening, and maybe they'll subvert this somehow. But let's let's go fast. I would love to. I would love to. Uh, where's this thing? Go for the brain. Yeah, of course, go for the brain. I'm gonna hang brain. I'm gonna run. Well, if, if you dash is your action. Oh, I can't stealth. Can't. So to stay stealth, I need to go normal speed. We well, can dash as your action, but but dash is your basically able to move. So you move and use your action to move and as well. That's it. Cutting that's action. Um, I'm gonna uh, no. I'm telling you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go. Uh, hey God, I'm gonna move over here right. stealthily and go for ready. Okay. That's what it's called, right? And wait. Just wait. And the trigger is when this asshole door guy right here moves forward. I'm gonna uh, stick him in the back of the neck. Okay. All right. Uh, Using the ready action. <laughs> you hear this? Squad Liam Whoa. definitely knows the five E rules the best. Oh, it seems like. <laughs> What has grown on you? I don't know. I, I saunter. You saunter? Saunter. Yes. <laughs> saunter over here. Yeah, I'll go around there too. That's just good. That's good. Actually. All right. What's it? What's in between? What's the yeah, between the that? Is that a boulder? Is, is that a, a giant raised 
uh, like, like, I see. How, how tall is that? That's about 25 feet tall. Again, Why putting heights on your obstacles. Oh, if it's not a known height already, put the height on it. <clears throat> this is just the most common question for obstacles. Uh, I'll go and uh, I'll just cast stones on myself. Okay, stones can cast on you. Uh, that brings us to Vex. All right, I can hear them screaming, so I'm going to run over. Okay. Paltrin gets on doing it. Who's screaming? You, you screamed. No, I'm uh, do you want to use your full round to move? Um, That's as far as you can move currently. Oh. Can I see anything from that point? Yeah, so all you see is Grog over there. covered and he's around the bend, so well, I run in. All right, I'll run in further. Um, can I run in and stealth, or is that it? Uh, you can attempt to. I'm going to try to stealth. Yeah, okay, you're, you're disadvantaged on the stealth roll, but go for it. Oh, 20. <laughs> oh, 17. Okay, oh, yeah, plus yeah. my stealth is just 5. All right, so we'll say you're kind of pulled off to the side there. The stealth twins over there being all stealthy like. I don't want to see what's going on with that. related. Oh, stealth. All right, uh, so that's your turn. Scanlan. Okay, I'm going to move right there into the room as far as I can. Yes, yeah, as far as uh, I can go that far. Okay. Uh, and cast Stinking Cloud right, right there. <laughs> it's going to smell like just ass. Great, great smell. <laughs> okay. Love uh, me a best Stinking you can see, Cloud. <laughs> and you haven't really seen where they are, so you're kind of like, oh, you kind of have the idea that perhaps they're in that vicinity based on the bolts around there. Okay. So you can cast over in this area, which is only Oh, oh because that's a big rock in my view. Though. This is a big rock right there. Okay, yeah. so yeah, I'll, I'll put it right, right, right there. Saying, right there. Okay, that's where they can go. All right, so a giant ass cloud. green uh, ass cloud. Uh, an ass cloud again. Begins Ooh. to fill this space here. As it does, they all begin to hack and cough. Hell yeah. You can hear this now between the rest of you echoing throughout. I'm slightly around. <laughs> I was just going to say. Head <laughs> frog, did this smell. Uh, <laughs> Constitution saving throws. <laughs> everything in the town. <laughs> all of them are failing. <laughs> all right, they, you hear a cacophonous amount of hacking, coughing as all of them drop their attack stances and begin just retching, nearly vomiting in the middle of this green cloud oh, gas. Standing. Uh, I'll also nice. take a great heal potion, is that what they're called? Not moderate? Yes, greater. Great, greater? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll do that by myself. Keep, keep, keep going. Okay, <laughs> greater heal potion is, is uh, 4d4 plus 4. Thank you. All right, that brings us to Percy. I'm going to start crawling around the, uh, oh, I have a little thingy. Oh, someone took the thingy. Oh, oh. laser pointer. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start heading down this direction. Uh, and I'm going to actually spend a movement, uh, spend my action to move a little further down. About, yeah, about about there, so I can kind of start getting a good look at what's up. Okay, good. All right, that brings us to Keelan. Um. Okay, so I am... <laughs> and move up to about here, I guess, okay. where I can see. I like the laser and pointer edition. That's nice. This block of stone right here, the stalactite yep. or mite or whatever Correct. it is. And I'm going to use wall of stone. And instead of creating a wall, I'm just going to take that one and I'm going to push it <clears throat> against that wall and try and crush those guys. Oh, <gasps> wait, you're going to use wall of stone to try and push that back? I'm going to take this wall and I'm going to go crunch. Is All that right. what wow. wall of stone uh, does? Yeah. I don't know. I like that. That's the most common. Can, can you do that? I'm trying to earthbend. Earth I do not. Potion thingies, whatever those okay, I'm very down with people getting creative with their spells. I think that's that's great, but that is just like a different spell. <laughs> uh, so I don't, I don't know about that one. Um, that. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, okay, so I know that that's like this is part of like the uh, the Marisha May stuff that I've heard is she just you know doesn't really keep track of her spells. It's totally fine to uh, to not you know like know in detail what every single one of your spells does. Honestly, I think that's okay, especially for new players. D and D is complicated and hard, um, but at least ask your dungeon master rather than like if you don't know what a spell does just be like hey can i use wall of stone to do this not just like i'm going to use wall of stone to do this thing that i don't know if it can do it's uh, yeah that's a little weird <laughs> yeah did you write it down though I didn't uh, know they were. she's got okay. she's got okay. water breathing so that works as wall of stone you can create a wall of stone but you cannot occupy the space of a creature mm. so you're not be able to push them back unfortunately but you could lock them into an area that's what you wanted to do the man telling us what we can and can't do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the nature of the spell, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's a waste of time. Um, instead, I will. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call lightning going. Fuck it. I'm just gonna lightning bolt some bitches. But also, as a caveat to what I just said, that might just be their group dynamic. Is if they're uncertain, then they just say it and they trust that Matt will correct them or stop them. That's a valid group dynamic. It's not one that I've ever been a part of, um, and not, I think, what my preferred dynamic would be, but if that works for your group, then more power to you. All right, you don't have view of any of them right now, unfortunately. Well, then I moved where I can. 
Okay. Yeah, good. Cop, cop attitude with the DM. Yeah, yeah. 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 charge goes really well. That'll be your turn. Because you move twice. You have to get a long distance. Yeah, you're back. Yeah, dude. Sorry. Cut those wizards of the coast, man. I know. Fucking Seattle. All right. So, uh, I love Seattle. Uh, and what's the DC again of your spell? Uh, oh, these are spell, DC, spell save DC? Yeah. Right, 19. 19. All right. Uh, all three of the, and you can now get a good view of them. They are dwarven, but their skin is ashy and gray. Their eyes are white and pupilless. Um, and they are all on the verge of vomiting right now. <laughs> They're both just like killing over the track. One of them tries to bring crossbow up and <laughs> has to put it back down again. They are unable to act this turn. Uh, the oh. weird brain creature, yeah, however. Yeah, look at that, uh, look at that. There's no way for him to retch from. It, yeah. it moves out of the cloud, looks over at you, Rod, and just kind of bears down for a second, and you feel this this intrusion oh, no, uh, in your mind. My professor uh, mind. Go ahead and make an intelligence saving throw. Oh, those aren't good for you. <laughs> well, this, this is ends poorly. Oh, good, my modifier's negative two, so give me Kaya. Six. No. All right. Good roll. Good seem... roll. That's a good, good, good roll. You suffer nine points of psychic damage psychic. as there's a sudden, just a blast of excruciating pain in the center of your brain. It actually shakes you a moment from your rage, which then fills your mind once again. Um, <laughs> also, oh, no. you suffer yeah, eight points of intelligence damage, technically. You immediately fall unconscious. <gasps> what? Yeah, um... When... That's... Also on a failure, roll 3d6. Scores reduced to zero. I don't know. Can how do you even regain intelligence from the intellect devourer's attack? I literally don't know. Uh, the score is reduced to zero. The target is stunned until it regains at least one point of intelligence. So, like the assumption is that you can get it back. Yeah, it just says the intact devourer is also forced out of the target if the target regains its devoured brain by means of a wish spell. But on otherwise, it does not specify how you can ever regain your intelligence. And my kind of thought up until this point was that there was no way to, because except for like a wish. Because th this is essentially equivalent. The intellect devourer is equivalent to the shadow, which drains your strength. But the shadow specifically says that you regain your strength after a long rest. So this just seems like Grog should just be fucked. Because they definitely don't have a wish. We will see. Your intelligence is brought to zero. Oh, but I was at six. We got to kill that thing. Oh, no. So I, 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 I tried to do a turnip. That brings us to <laughs> Tiberius. Uh, oh Grog no, Grog! I, mean, Grog. <laughs> I say. You no. watch Grog go <laughs> and fall to the ground. Okay. Almost uh, into the campfire. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, um, okay, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna do it right up to where Grog is. All right. Okay, I'm throwing. Not gonna see the brain fucker. Uh, yes, you can from there. Brain fucker. Brain official name. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're not brain fucker. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna fire a glacial blast. I, I just did. Okay. Lobie. All right. Single target beam. Mm -hmm. Lobie. All right. I'm gonna name him Lobie. <laughs> oh, uh, I guess that it hasn't consumed the brain yet, but it is still interesting because it doesn't specify how the target regains intelligence. So it is. Same throw. What let you see? My DC is uh, 17. It just rolled 17. Yeah, makes the same throw. Same number. Four, six, and uh, 56. Twenty-nine damage. The ice. As you put your arms out, you focus this blast of just freezing cold arcane energy that slams into the side of this brain creature. As it does, you see it begins to freeze its entire body. As it reaches up and tries to climb up, it solidifies and then shatters into a hundred million pieces. Oh no! The brain's dead. You killed Jeff Lobby. Killed Jeff Lobby. He's alone. Lisa <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. Lisa and then the nine intelligence stand. Um, all right. <laughs> so the brain cascades across the ground. Lisa Lobie. And thank God. Uh, that's, you're now seeing three dwarves retching and coughing over, kind of looking about very nervously. Can I move to where I can get a line of sight on that, that one? On this one here? Yeah. Yeah, you can move to there and get a line of sight. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to shoot him. Oh, wait. No, I can't. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that. a little bit of cover. I'm okay. Gonna, eh, it's fine. Yeah. I'm really good. Just be about us, okay? okay? That's your job. Um... 27. That hits. Oh, you are right. Okay. 
Oh. oh, it also seems like Greater Restoration, the spell Greater Restoration, can cure any reduction to one of the target's ability scores. So it would be it would be Greater Restoration, which I think maybe they'll have access to in like a temple or something, but they'll have to pay for that. I should have tried to... Well, well, um, wait, frog weirdly seems smart. Um, hunter's mark on that guy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, 11. 11, alright. 11, and then I'm gonna hit him again. Intellect devourers are terrifying and that's a creatures. Right. Is the, and that is the is long and short of that. For that arrow, and then the 6. For hunter's mark is 5. So a total of... Oh, Jesus, all these... 30 plus 5 is... Carry 3. 35. <laughs> <laughs> the the hawking, coughing, uh, coughing Duragar dwarf. <laughs> one in the shoulder, the other shoulder, and it looks back at you as it inhales the big old whiff of horrible sticking cloud gas. The arrow shoo, through its throat and the back of its head falls flat on its back. Yes. Oh. The other ones look nervously about. Get him a, a pillow. Very bad place. What? One of them like coughing out, saying something in undercommon. <laughs> Anyone here speak undercommon? I do. You do? You speak undercommon? I do. Undercommon? I knew we were going to be going You hear? Just... You hear? <laughs> undercommon. <laughs> back, back to the master. Um, all right, that brings us to uh, Scanlan. Uh, uh, shit. Uh, I don't know. I, I did not understand them, right? So I no, don't know that they're going to run. No. Okay. Let them run back to the master. We'll I, I didn't Can know I that call running, out so. that I heard them say, don't let them run? No, yeah, this is happening just as you heard Gosh. them. Uh, okay, well, um, uh, I don't have a good line of sight on them, so, um, and so I, I don't even know that they're there, really, right? I just hear coughing in the distance. Yep. Okay, so you're, then um, I'll just move further into the, the cavern there, and right. I don't know that this works, but I'll try to cast a spell magic on Brog. I, I, don't, okay. I don't know if, that, if it's magic. I don't know no idea. All right, so you go ahead and we're focus. You cast this magic in the rock's vicinity. You see the shift of arcane kind of waving energy. Uh, if it's, I only it's had a brain. Doesn't do it. Doesn't do it. Damn it. All right, then as my bonus action, can I still give him an inspiration dice on the like, saving? Uh, you think at this point, Grog isn't unconscious. Rog is catatonic. Oh. Rog has no intelligence. Oh. There is nothing oh. at home. You just see him oh. on the ground, oh. drooling, oh. eyes glades over. There is no matter what you tell cantaloupe, there. it's not going to feel better about it. Okay, then I give my oh. dice to, uh, uh, to Vax. Okay. Okay. Try and insult that cantaloupe, you just don't get Vax. it. Oh. I've just inspired you. <laughs> Intellect devour is a okay, well. okay, I hear, uh, terrifying monster. Uh, hey, it's not your turn. I, I, just I do wonder if the if the illithids are the ones that are creating all these abominations, given that these uh, Durigars seem to be carrying around an intellect devourer like a pet. Uh, so that that ends Scanlan's turn. Percy. Um, uh, <laughs> laser. I'm going to take my laser. Oh, your laser. Your laser. laser. All right. I want to I want to curl forward to just on the other other side of a grog over there, so I can see this little jerk. Uh, it's a tough call. He has cover. I, I ignore cover. I, it's like I have like I have like it's one of my magical three things I do. Cover, <laughs> to He's got a gun. Yeah, if he has, I ignore half or three quarters cover. Then you ignore three quarters cover, which he has. Okay, yes. I ignore it. Um, sure. I'm also going to uh, make this. Uh, I'm going to take a penalty to my to my attack bonus to, to to attempt to do some damage and to not kill but injure if possible. I wanna, okay. I want to try. I want to leave one for question. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead and roll just a damage attack. Right. Or you want to just do subtle damage? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're gonna aim in a way that doesn't do lethal damage. Go for it. Just, just a normal attack. There's no penalty. So yeah. just, just 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 my, my my penalty for extra damage. Mm -hmm. Aha! I crit. Um. So that's that's fun. Uh, Delightful. Uh, roll damage. And 10, that's 25 points of damage. Yay. 25 points of damage. All right. You run around the corner, pull the gun out, and aim at this, like, <clears throat> but you look now and see this, like, ghastly-looking evil female-looking gray-skinned dwarf. Looks over at you and <laughs> reacts and goes for her weapon. Angus, we are nearly done. Uh, it is two hours, 52 minutes out of out of an even three. Uh, we're at a uh, time and a half on speed. Uh, cause the, cause the combat was going long and, uh, the viewers were not interested in, the, <laughs> in the combat. No one told me that in chat, but the, uh, the concurrent viewer graph, uh, told me that. So if you want me to turn it down, I, I totally can. Uh, but yeah, right now we're at 1.5 speed. As you do, you let loose and fire straight into her shoulder, blasting through most of her shoulder, exposing bone. It's not a death blow, but you see she's incapacitated. Nice. Uh, that is, that's my that's my turn. Let oh. one of them live, so I can question them. That's oh. we got one. Keyleth, oh. Oh. We got one. We got one. Did that well then, oh, yeah. yeah, that dwarf survived. <laughs> if we got the guy we need, I will move over a bit. You're yep. on. And all right, go for it. Mines. And I will say, Angus, and anyone else that is watching, uh, I always schedule my lives uh, at least a day ahead of time uh, when possible. Especially if it's something like this where, you know, it's kind of an event, it's a series. Uh, so subscribe. I, all that YouTuber nonsense, subscribe, turn on the bell. Uh, also join my Discord. Uh, I have a Discord and I do uh, ping a live stream notifications role in my Discord whenever 
I schedule a live and I'm about to go live. Uh, so you will always be very aware of when this is starting. First off, make constitution safe. You step into a thinking cloud. And that Discord link back. is in the description. <laughs> Not having control. <laughs> <laughs> I do the um, so that is, what is that, 22? 22 points damage. damage. All right, so the bolt shrieks from the cloud in the sky. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. No, 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 Undead King, I, I know. All good. You do not uh, you do not have to chat. Feel free to just uh, hang out and chill. But Undead King is from the Discord. He's one of the, uh, I think one of the, uh, one of the first uh, non, like, like people I didn't know from outside of this people to, uh, to join the Discord. So very... Very warm welcome to you, Undead King. Um, I missed this one. I'll hopefully catch Ep3. Hell yeah. Uh, hopefully the break between uh, Ep2 and Ep3 will be much shorter than the break between Ep1 and Ep2. Uh, hopefully Ep3, I'm hoping to do uh, early next week. Maybe, maybe Tuesday maybe monday uh no later than next thursday it will definitely be less than a week of uh of break between the two other Duragar, as it sparks on the ground you see bits of stone get thrown up from the sheer force of the bolt doing a sincere amount of damage to it i don't have to finish it but it looks since very very fucked up uh you can see part of space is charred now and it's reeling from the blast it's probably blew out his eardrums with the cabinet's blast and thunder that's, uh, that's your turn uh it's now both of their turn turn down the speed uh, they both bit. feel the same for the two and a four they're both still hacking and coughing <laughs> in the same cloud uh, uh, uh vax you're up Okay, and there's a big cloud of uh, poo stain. Correct. It's yes. all here. The poo cloud. Can you look closer? Damn it. All right. Do it. Where's the poo? Just go in there, man. I'm going to hold my breath, and I'm going to go one, do some mild two, counts. three, four, five, and grab this guy around the neck and hold my knives to his, my daggers to his neck, and just hunker down and try to hold him okay. hostage. Go ahead and make a, uh, go ahead and make a constitution check. Mafia check? Use that dice. Use that dice. With advantage, because you're holding your breath. Yeah. Uh, Use that dice! Use that and dice! Give me a d8. 22. No, 20, no, 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 roll, roll a gate to add to it. 15. <laughs> 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 I, I was just <laughs> saying, I'll leave you the roll of the daggers out. And because this is a natural cloud, the arcane force of it puts it through your nostrils, mm. and you can't help it. <coughs> your turn immediately ends as you begin feeling your lunch retching up in here. Oh. Uh, that brings us to Grog. Oh, you are. I got it. You were brain dead. Uh, Tiberius, you're up. Uh, what is it? What do we need to do? We'll figure that out when we. Oh, no, Grog. Can you dispel that shit? I mean, I can't dispel it, but I might be able to cure him afterwards. Tiberius, can you dispel that shit? It's the same spell. Spell. It's the same spell. Um, I might be able to. So the guy knocked down over there is. Oh, um, this guy right here. That's the one that we knocked out with the arrow. Yeah, that's that's the dead one. Okay, the dead one is the one we knocked out. Uh, he's dead. Uh, who, who, who that's one we shot. No, no, that's one Liam. That one lives. That one's, yeah. And the one right here is... That one's, that's the one by me is dead. weak. Both of um, them are pretty weak right now, actually. I think I can step next to Percy here without stepping into that cloud. That... So you can step over Grog, get around here, you mean? <laughs> that's... Come on. Sorry, excuse me, Grog. Pardon. <clears throat> yeah, I will shoot a firebolt at the bottle across the way. There. I go ahead and hold that. 14. 14. Unfortunately, it's not yet. You aim and it manages to just fly away. Oh my gosh. Uh, Vex. Me. Yes. I step over and I try to shoot the one and he just. Do me a shit. I stay out of the stake. There you go. Yeah. Alright, nice. Alright. Attack. Uh, 20. Yeah, that hits. Okay. 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 That hits. Go to little damage. Eight. That's enough. As the arrow screens off, slams into the chest, it catches itself, steps back and plummets off the side of the cliff onto yeah. the lower floor, about 20 feet down. Smack! Under the ground. And I ask Scanlan, Scanlan to dispel the stank cloud, and I yell, can I, can I yell out surrender in undercommon? You yell out, surrender! Make an surrender. intimidation check. Cling on. Cling on. Whoa! Okay, um, eight. Eight? Eight. It's with the dice tonight. It rolled a one. Yay! Uh, Yay! It looks around, and in circumstances, Beautiful. extremely dire. It drops its weapons, falls to its knees, at your mercy. Yes. That's where we'll end the game tonight. Oh, hey. That's where we're ending the game. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. Frog's so, so can I go dead. over and try and call Back to normal speed. I'm vanilla sky no. right now. So we're picking up next um, week. Oh, oh, no. Just five more oh, hours, bro. Matt. Just five more <laughs> hours. We'll say, we'll say for the circumstance here, you go ahead and spend a healing spell on him. His wounds mend. No effect on him. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, uh, right. Well, guys, right. that's episode two of Critical Role. <laughs> Damn it. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to tell your friends to come watch. We'll be back next week, Thursday at 7 o'clock. 
I know schedule says seven to nine. We usually run a little later because D and D, and why not? Uh, yeah. This isn't right in the schedule, but we, we consider 7 to 10. Um, 7 to 10. But yeah, hope you guys had fun. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully we'll have our Thank donations you, up next week. Feel free to check it out. This is Zach, our amazing uh, <laughs> master of, of all awesomeness on this Twitch channel. Yay. Zach, what's going Good on, job, man? Guys. Thank, Thank you. you. you got a thousand subscribers. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Crazy. That's Heck like yeah. two weeks in. Yeah, I know. You go, yeah. We'll get you your stuff. <laughs> yeah, you we'll get, we'll get you Are shit. You okay. I got to print that. All right, they're winding down. Uh, I'll wind down. Last week I ended uh, pretty pretty suddenly because I had somewhere to be, but I'll do a little bit a uh, little bit more of a breakdown this time. Uh, let's see. There we go. Oh my, and <laughs> my cam is flipped. That's fine. I like looking at you guys on the on the OBS. All right, so what did we think? What did we think of Ep Two? Uh, I liked it. I liked it a little, um, little combat heavy. Clearly, towards the end there, uh, I'm gonna have to really think about, probably rewatch the stream, see what people say in the VOD comments, uh, for how to handle uh, those those combats, especially because you know. I think when you're watching it live for the first time and there's not the option to fast forward, you don't know what's going to happen. Like I know that there's 130 episodes, you know, so that the tension's a little bit less for me. Uh, but you know, if you're, if you're watching this live for the first time, that, that, t that real tension is there. So I think that that makes the combat a little bit more intriguing. Um, especially you know if it's the first time for a lot of you guys that have already seen this you know like if it was just me watching it i might watch the combats at normal speed but for you guys who have probably already seen this uh the kind of incredible memorable critical role moments are probably mostly out of combat or maybe in the how do you kill them moments um but let me know if all of those assumptions that i just said are total BS. Maybe I'm I'm totally wrong, and uh, a lot of the great com moments are in the combat. Maybe they get better at it, or not better necessarily, but maybe they figure out a way to make it go faster. Uh, I don't think that this is like anything on them. It's just kind of the nature of D and D combat. It's slow at the best of times. Uh, really digging into those war gaming roots. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I'll how I'll deal with that, but overall the the episode was was fun i'm gonna gonna mull over it a bit before i actually give my one minute take which is something that i'm gonna do after every episode is is give a little one minute take and then i'll edit those down eventually uh, after i've done every single episode so that should be should be fun uh but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna mull over it a little bit more but that's uh that's about it. That was Critical Role Ep 2. Hopefully we'll be back pretty soon. Uh also for those of you who are still here, um, especially in terms of like, you know, missing an episode, uh, or if you hop in halfway, do remember that YouTube, even on a live stream, you can up your playback speed. So if you, you know, hop in halfway through the stream and you want to see the entire thing all the way through. Uh, you can just go to the beginning of the stream, set your playback speed to like 1.1, 1.2, and eventually you'll just catch up to the live. Uh, because, you know, obviously I'm, I'm creating the live slower than you're watching it. Uh, so that is a recommendation that's available on YouTube that, you know, especially if you're like a Twitch head, uh, it's not available in the Twitch player, so you might not be thinking about it. Uh, but that is that is a possibility on YouTube. So... Yeah, that's that's about it. Uh, thank you guys for for joining. The viewership on this was crazy. Uh, my last Critical Role live uh, only I think saw maybe I think like one uh, person came in to talk to me, maybe two. Uh, so I I'm really happy that uh, a lot of you guys came in, joined. Uh, like I was telling Angus, follow subscribe, turn on the bell, all that fun jazz. Join the Discord if you want more um, direct notifications from me. 
And I think that'll about do it. I will see you guys next time. Peace.